Hey everybody, today we're debating Flat Earth versus Globe Earth, and we're starting right now with the Globe side in particular. Amy, thanks so much for being with us. The floor is all yours. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much, James. Flat versus Globe. After all, when we look outside our window, when we talk and walk to the store, or even take a cross-country train, the land around us feels flat. Though there are numerous reasons why the Earth is an elliptical sphere. That is to say a sphere that is not perfectly round by about 21 kilometers. However, the Earth is most certainly a globe because this is what gravity does to large astral bodies with gas stars and rocky planets like our own. And science has been learning about gravity for a long time with Galileo, who in 1654 began to perform experiments at the Leaning Tower of Pisa, noting that it didn't matter how much mass an object had, both small or large round balls he held fell to the ground at the same time. Or Isaac Newton, who may note that every object with a mass attracts other objects with mass. This is indeed what keeps us bound to the Earth. As the Earth's gravity vastly outpowers our own, the same with our moon, but not with the sun, who has an even larger gravitational pull. Though it wasn't until the early 1900s with Albert Einstein that we could start to understand gravity from a more three or even four dimensional level. From a top down perspective, it looks like objects with massive gravity are attracting their object, which is true. But what's really going on is gravity's force is making a bowing effect like a bowl. However, our velocity is so fast, or 107,000 kilometers an hour, that instead of us going straight towards the center, we create an orbit. The same which is true of our entire solar system. Though we've known the world is round for thousands of years, ever since Eratosthenes, began measuring shadows in different cities. He began to notice that directly overhead at noon, there was no shadow in Cyan, but a very long shadow at Alexandria, showing the first empirical evidence for a round Earth, which was then followed up with Aristotle observing ships under the horizon as they left. Though many of the time thought, the sun revolved around the earth or an ether. So how do we know what's correct if even we in the past can be wrong? The answer is science or the process of observing a phenomena, gathering data, creating hypothesis, making a predictive model, analyzing our results, then submitting them for peer review. The peer review of academia and experts is crucial because other scientists should be able to do the same experiment, then gather the same results using the same model. This process allows humans to weed out their own bias, helping us create modern medicine, engineering, and the capabilities of leaving our planet. We have live feeds of the spherical Earth, 24-7, 365, along with many countries working together, like at the International Space Station. Though so this gets down to the crux of the debate. Well, part one of the thesis. First, how can we trust government institutions like NASA? NASA seems to be the big bad when it comes to let's say those that are not sold on a round earth. Has the government ever lied to you? Has the media ever lied to you? Most sane people would say yes to both of these. 
But that also starts from the pretense that they are hiding something massive, like the shape of the earth, from us. Now, the why question seems to annoy flat earthers. They say part of the problem is we can't know what's in people's hearts and minds or even half of everything if they're hiding it from us. Sure. But once again, it does assume atheist, theist, liberal, conservative, anarchist, fascist, every political spectrum, every religious ideology is in on it. And so I'm not sure what that leaves us because that never happens. If the new world order has this level of control, it's amazing. My other counterpoint to this is that the government frigs a lot of things up, and that stands for both sides of the aisle. Yet there are no main whistleblowers from the New York Times. Hell, even Fox News would be working with MSNBC and CNN. Even Donald Trump would be in it. Because Space Force, by definition, has to believe in some form of space to fly to. At that point, it is every institution of power, big and small, that I can think of. Thus, part two of my thesis is who holds the burden of proof? Someone skeptical of the round earth or a believer of the flat earth? We'll say, uh, either way, we'll say that it goes back to the original statement. Don't we see a flat earth outside our window? Well, yes. Outside our window looks flat, but that's a single data point. All of the current empirical evidence, testable, verifiable, the overwhelming amount shows that the world is in fact spherical, which means the burden of proof is on those with an alternative viewpoint to present what sort of model and methodology we can use to make predictions like those in science. Finally, there is no condescension in my heart, metaphorically speaking. Another thing that I know flat earthers bring up because they say round earth supporting people look down in them for even bringing up their point of view and won't give their ideas a chance. Well, I'm coming in with a Socratic method, but an open mind. My bar is going to be high along with something that survives scientific consensus because from what I can tell, this is an epistemological debate about are we going to accept science or not? Thank you. To Leo. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't really know what to what to say with respect to the the subject of tonight's debate. Simply because I don't know what I could say that hasn't already been said, probably close to a million times over. Um, so I guess I can just start with some really basic things. Uh, the first thing I would mention is all of our navigation systems depend on a spherical Earth. They, they wouldn't work on, on a flat Earth just as a result of the, ge the geometric pattern that we have to lay out and that, that it matches that of a spherical Earth. So like planes, trains, ships wouldn't be able to get to where they're going if we didn't account for these. Um, surveying has to account for this as well, particularly on the larger scales. <clears throat> Not only that, but we've got uh, a number of humans orbiting about, uh, what is it, 8,000, 6,000, 5,000 something odd miles above the Earth, something like that, in the International Space Station, who have taken pictures of the Earth. They, like my, my partner here, Amy, said... They, we have there, there's live feed cameras on it. You can find them on YouTube. If you just you, YouTube live feed International Space Station, you'll get it, and you can look at where it's at over the Earth. Um, we, we, we'll hear the same things. Well, that's just CGI. Okay, show me how, uh, and then they can't. And another thing that Amy mentioned that I think is just a nail in the coffin is gravity. 
one of the most accurate and well-confirmed models that humans have ever developed. There isn't a single prediction it's made that hasn't come true. So when we look at it, and again, this is something my partner said already, go, going back to the, there's just not much to really say on this that hasn't already been said a million times over. Um, when, when we look at the, at the preponderance of the evidence, when we look at what, what, what we can detect to the most accurate degrees, it seems that what we find is we, we live on a planet. And this planet is, is spheroidal in its shape, and it orbits a star. And my main confusion with, with people who believe in the flat Earth is why is it so crucial? What turns on, on the Earth being spheroidal or flat? Why is it such an important hill to die on? And I, I guess I'll just leave it there. You got it. And want to say, folks, if it's your first time here at Modern Day Debate, want to say welcome. We hope that you feel welcome, no matter what walk of life you are from, whether you be flat earth, globe earth, politically left, politically right, you name it. We are glad that you are here and have to let you know we have many more juicy debates coming up. For example, at the bottom right of your screen, we are thrilled to announce that this November, Inspiring Philosophy Christian Debater has agreed to debate Atheist Debater Rationality Rules. They have both agreed this is going to be a huge one. You don't want to miss it. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that upcoming debate as well as many others as there are many more to come. And with that, we're going to kick it over to our Flat Earth side. Want to say huge thanks to all of our guests for being here. Want to remind you folks, attack the arguments instead of the person, as always, whether it be in the live chat or in the comments. And a special thank you as Iron Horse had filled in last minute while in his hot tub. He said, yes, I can fill in for Davey. I will be there even though I am in my hot tub. He pulled an amaranth on us tonight. And so we on Twitch are switching it over to the pools and hot tubs streaming category as Iron Horse has taken Modern Day Debate there for the first time. But with that, we're going to kick it over to our flat earth side. Thanks so much for being with us. Wits it gets it. And Iron Horse, thanks for jumping in for Davey. We appreciate it. Even being willing that you said, yep, yeah, I'll be there right now. So thank you very much, gentlemen. The floor is all yours. You want to go first, Iron? You got it. Um, I'm quite happy for you to go with it. I'm, as I say, last minute stand in. So um, obviously you've got something prepared. I don't. So I'm quite happy for you to go, mate. Okay. Cheers. Yeah, I don't have anything prepared, but I'll address everything that they just said. So um, first thing that I thought stood out was the claim that gravity is like the most well-known proven idea ever and it's a nail in the coffin etc and it's never made a prediction that was inaccurate <clears throat> that is just patently false of course uh, on the cosmological scale relativity's predictions are drastically wrong like to an egregious uh degree for example as early as the 30s applying relativity to the sky we saw that the uh, galaxy distribution of mass was off by 97 percent that the galaxies only had three percent of the mass needed based on what relativity predicted uh, the expansion rate uh, is far too fast it needs more energy you have constructs called dark matter and dark energy undefined un, uh, they're called dark because they don't interact with the electromagnetic spectrum uh, and we don't really know what they are, and then we assume that they're material. Uh, you know, there's a difference in how much people think they're off, 10 to the 120th power. Some argue about that. Anyway, long story short, relativity on the cosmological scale literally did make predictions that were wrong, drastically wrong, not even in the ballpark of being correct. Um, and it's been known for a long time. And in addition, it's also completely inaccurate on the quantum scale. Everything that gravity's claimed on the quantum scale has been thoroughly debunked. Uh, for example, superposition just destroys the idea of the uh, distribution of mass, uh, creating you know equidistant uh, curvature of space and time. And there are many different other examples. So it doesn't work on quantum scale. Uh, the localization of gravity being Newtonian gravity, which is 9.8 meters second squared, little g, is of course downward acceleration. And it's agreed upon average in which things fall. Amy mentioned that uh, somebody was dropping balls from a tower and they were dropping at the same rate. Well, it's an agreed upon average. Things don't actually always drop at exactly 9.8 meters per second squared. It's just an average and it fluctuates. And that doesn't really matter. Once something goes down, it goes down on a, a regularly similar rates. 
Uh, and that's Newtonian gravity. So long story short, that's not in any way what is claimed anymore. And uh, I can quote to you Walter Liu and from MIT uh, explaining to you that every phenomena we see on the earth, everything that we experience, everything that's held together on the earth is all because of electricity and the electric nature of all things. And that it's 10 to the 36 power stronger than gravity even claims to be. So there is no evidence on the earth at all that's exclusive to the idea of gravity. And that's ironically the only place that the math for gravity even works. And so obviously what we're being told from this other side is drastically misrepresenting what the truth is. There is no evidence at all for gravity. That's just one example. Uh, you can beg the question, reify it. But the truth is everyone knows that the modern version of relativity is best case scenario, drastically incomplete and has to be updated and does not account for any of the phenomena observed on the cosmological or quantum scales. So there's the first thing. Secondly, he said something to the effect of um, long distance measurements have to account for the curvature of the earth. Well, what actually happens is, is we take a uh, plane surveying data, right? Where we assume a flat earth, we get a vertical line that we drop horizontal or perpendicular to the horizontal plane uh, to get our level. And then we make measurements in small increments. And then we stitch those together over long distances. And then there's something called geodetic surveying. And what they do is they take the stitch together data from the plane survey data right? And then they look out over distances of take azimuth readings and different things like this. And they go into the observations with a predetermined window, meaning anything that they see that falls outside of it, they just throw it out. I actually debated main surveyor on here. He's a geodetic surveyor. He openly admits this. So they throw out every single observation that doesn't fit within their presupposed little window. He actually explains that if he hadn't have done that, um, he would have got a radius value way too big consistently. He has to throw them out. So this is basically cooking the books or um, Texas sharpshooting fallacy, right? Where you just kind of like the idea that they shoot the gun and then they go draw the circle after they shoot the gun. They throw out all the data that doesn't work within their presupposition. They then take a weighted mean average within that predetermined window and they try to get within 90% accuracy of the NDSA model or the presupposition of the goal, the globe. So uh, if we actually look at the evidence, it doesn't work at all with the radius. So that's what's ironic. And, and the whole fundamental part here where she's saying, Basically, the idea is that uh, we have the burden of proof because we're challenging a river. Well, she actually alluded to it, right? So all, all empirical evidence actually shows us that the Earth is a stationary topographical plane and that it's geocentric. That's what all evidence ever shows us. So that's our default position, okay? I mean, based on all evidence. He brought up planes. Planes assume a flat stationary Earth. I just talked to pilots the other day. I have them on video admitting, yeah, yeah, you have to fly the plane like it's flat and stationary. Uh, their navigation routes are called great circle routes. You can have circles on a flat earth also. I didn't know if you guys knew that, but bringing up the fact that they fly with circle routes is literally irrelevant to the earth being the globe. So all evidence, actually ballistic missiles, I can, I have like probably over 50 documents right here on my computer that the military constantly assumes the earth's flat and stationary uh, to do anything. Long, long distance ballistic missiles, electromagnetic propagation over a flat earth for ground weapon systems, all fighter jets, helicopters, you name it. Um, it all assumes a stationary topographical plane. They assume a dielectric plane for electromagnetic propagation, et cetera. And so all the evidence shows us this, all of our actual measurements, as we just covered the physical measurements that we have, they're actually using plane survey data. Then we stitch it together and assume a globe and had to throw out a bunch of stuff. So everything shows us that the earth is flat. All empirical evidence shows it's a topographical plane, right? And that it's stationary. And if it's stationary, that means it's what's called geocentric and meaning that the earth is the center. Now, this is what the default position is. This is all empirical evidence ever. They say we've known for thousands of years. This isn't true either. Even if you believe the story of Eratosthenes without primary documentation, he was just a minority in the world at the time anyway. And like they said, they thought it was geocentric. So long story short, yeah, you have the burden of proof if you think the earth's a globe. I do not care if you want to misrepresent it and say that everyone in the world must be in on a lie. No one thinks that. Everyone believes the lie. Everyone believes the lie. They were all told the lie when we were like five as well. They don't think they're lying. There's not some like concerted conspiracy with 7 billion people working behind the scenes to trick us or something. They all believe the lie. The teachers believe the lie. The NASA employees believe the lie. People just believe the lie. Okay. And so that doesn't, that's a misrepresentation of what we're actually saying. And the truth is, again, you would need empirical evidence. So I'll try and wrap it up pointing this out. You need to provide physical empirical evidence that the Earth is, in fact, a sphere with a radius of 3,959 miles and that it's tilted on a 66.6 degree axis, wobbling, spinning 1,037 miles per hour east, going around the sun 66,600 miles per hour in a vacuum. This is a positive claim. 
And you claim that the universe is expanding in all directions infinitely, and we can't really tell. And it looks like we're the center with even distribution. But I think that means that it's probably going to look like that everywhere else, right? And you come up with all these frantic ideas of how to keep your piece, your story together. Theoretically, we need actual physical empirical evidence. And when we went and looked for it, which is why the government admits they censor this egregiously, is because you can't find it. And we actually falsified the radius where he, she said that the boats go over the curve of the earth. They actually do not, right? We see the horizon far too far for the geometric limitations of the globe earth. And what that means is that the horizon is not a physical geometric location that tangibly blocks anything. It's an apparent location that fluctuates. We have observations that are 10, 15, 20 times too far, requiring the radius be over a quarter million miles. So no, boats don't disappear over the curvature of the earth. Right, Eratosthenes, he assumed a distant sun, assumed parallel rays, and then used spherical geometry to beg the question. That also doesn't prove the Earth's a ball, right? And there's no primary documentation that guy even did any of that. So long story short, yes, we do want the physical empirical evidence. We know that NASA was founded with Nazis and has consistently lied ever since. We've caught them lying many times. And so, no, we don't blindly believe the government, we, nor do we think that NASA is the one federal government agency that doesn't lie. So long story short, we measured the surface of the Earth. It's not curving. And if the radius value is not 3959, and that's been falsified, the entire model is wrong because every single aspect of the model requires that. And I'll also let you know ahead of time, there is no motion ever been proven that the Earth is spinning. There's no evidence for it whatsoever. And even Einstein himself will tell you that centrifugal and Coriolis effects would happen if the sky is moving around the Earth in a letter he wrote to Ernst Mach. And there's no physical empirical evidence that the earth is spinning or curving. And so, yeah, that's why we're here. And you make claims that are uh, violative of natural law. So we want empirical physical evidence and then we'll just tear it apart if you think you've got it. And I want to keep saying I'm going to wrap it up, but I want to really soak this in for the audience. We used to think the earth was a globe too, bro. Okay, so this like arrogant, condescending tone that people come into the conversation with, acting as if we're ignorant and incompetent and inept, is very disingenuous. We all knew that the Earth was a globe, too, at one point. At least we thought we did. We all know your position. The truth is most flat earthers have studied it way more in depth than the people that mock and ridicule people. Okay, so we we learned the story, and that's why we know it's not true because there's no evidence for it. So, uh, yeah, there you go. That's my opener. You got it. With that, we're going to jump into open conversation. Want to let you know, folks, we are going to have a Q&A after the open conversation. So if you happen to have a question, you can submit it two ways. One is if you type in at Modern Day Debate in the live chat and then put in your question, as well as if you want to do a super chat or actually I forgot it, we mentioned in the description. If you're like, no, nah, I don't want to do a super chat. I don't like it that YouTube takes 30%. You can use Venmo or PayPal as well. And those we also put at the top of the list for during the Q&A. But again, if you want, you just can put at Modern Day Debate as you don't have to pay. We try to get to some of the unpaid questions as well, assuming that we have enough time at the end. So with that, thanks very much to our guests for being here. They're all linked to the description. I want to say that, folks. Keep that in mind. I'm going to remind you of that later on throughout the debate. But with that, thank you very much to our guests. The floor is all yours. Did Flat Earth Aussie get an opening or did he forego his? I think he did a short and sweet one and then handed it over to Austin. But do I, do I understand that right? I actually did ask Austin if he could just go first. I wouldn't mind having a bit of an opener, you know. But There's about yeah, a, I can give you about a minute. Oh, sorry about that. It's uh, that the time just got ate, eaten up pretty quick. Austin had a... A lot to, a lot to see there, but we give yeah, you. Yeah, sorry, short... I misunderstood, bro. I thought you were from, so I just started to make make up the whole time. But uh, that's my bad. I can give you a short and sweet one. How about that? And then, if you guys would like a little bit of extra time, Leo and Amy, we can give you that before we go into open conversation. That way, it's balanced. Go ahead, fire with Aussie. Let her rip. Yeah, man. I just, um, yeah. Well, I had plenty of things I was going to say, but if I've only got a minute, that limits me a bit. Um, basically, navigation, I think, is probably a good place to start because on the flat Earth. The way all our maps originally started was we basically had a magnetic northern centre. So all navigation both had a magnetic compass and a fixed polar star. So all our maps and charts and everything correlates to that. So east and west are always going to be big circles around the northern centre. And that doesn't change the thing. But the only thing that really changes is people then assume that it's a globe because as soon as you get far enough away from Polaris that it disappears from view, which we call the equator, they assume they've descended into the underworld, which naturally enough they see in the sky this big crucifix, which is the grave marker, which is what we associate with death and the underworld and all that sort of thing. So basically it's basically a whole of superstitious nonsense to say that we actually did descend into anywhere where simply whenever you travel, everything appears to 
to change, including the stars, and naturally very high things appear to get lower and lower. And that's all the that Polaris is doing as you're getting further and further away from it. It's not evidence that you're actually going over curvature for that to happen. So um, it's a simple matter of perspective of everything getting lower in the distance. It doesn't prove that you are actually descending or going over a curve. Um, gravity was their other big go-to, and I don't think we need that one to, to go too far into that because we know that anything that's lighter than air will float in air. If it's, I mean, if it's lighter than air, it actually ascends, it goes up, and if it's heavier than air, it descends, it goes down. Um, that's a really straightforward, basic thing. So nothing in physics actually changes from what we know and observe just because we know the Earth is flat stationary. The only thing that does change is we don't have to assume something dropping is actually moving diagonally sideways 30 times faster than it's actually dropping, which we have to assume if the Earth is spinning at the speeds that the globe is like to believe it is. There's five minute. <laughs> You got it. And like I said, Leo and Amy, if you'd like a minute to counterbalance that, just so there's exactly the same I just want to make really just quick points that, you know, relati relativity, uh, tons of empirical evidence. It really goes to what kind of empirical evidence. In a second, I would actually like to show some of the journals that not only accept relativity, but use them in their models and journals like Nature. And so the question would then be, what kind of journals would you accept? Do you have any of your own or anything kind of like that? Um, I want to point that the same goes for gravity. But just like Leo was saying, gravity is one of the most well-tested theories that we have in science. And so I could also show articles utilizing gravity and showing why Science, it's the scientific consensus, but would you believe them? The question I really am asking is what sources would you accept? And then, you know, uh, it's not a Texas sharpshooter fallacy. We didn't draw anything around it. We are being descriptive, not prescriptive. Um, that would be, have to be an assertion that uh, need to be proven. Um, you know, uh, one of the things I just want to point out, they all uh, we utilize the globe. Um, to get cheaper tickets and faster routes uh, i don't on their model they all the the model they try and put forward would be like a flat disc and it doesn't explain why things would be colder in the equator like if the south is in the center that so why is why would it be colder um no burden to proof that is obviously not true in fact that's going to be the majority i think of the debate tonight because i don't think that they can fulfill it. And everyone's told a lie in fifth grade. They mean scientists and your teacher. They mean the teachers are lying to you. Um, and we want to, I just wanted to know things like what are under the flat earth. And the last point would just be, and uh, uh, there's, there's a common meme in flat earth circles, you know, NASA funded by Nazis, Godwin's law, all this stuff. This is, you know, uh, uh, not only that, but these are still the same people that are in control of us is these type of national socialist type of people. And so, I mean, there's just no evidence for that, but it is a common conspiracy uh, uh, narrative. Thank you very much for that last bit of opening. We're going to jump into open conversation. And thanks very much to our guests. The floor is all yours. Okay. Objectively, NASA, when it was founded, put uh, SS officer of the Nazi regime in charge of space exploration. This is just a fact. So, yeah, but what what turns on this with respect to the flat Earth? Like, not NASA could have been founded by like aliens from a like a third, fourth, fifth, sixth dimension. It still wouldn't matter. Like, yeah. Well, that's NASA a good thing I didn't claim that it proved the flat Earth, Earth then, huh, Leo? Well, no, I, I didn't say that you did. I asked, actually asked you a question. I asked you what. Yeah, I said we don't trust NASA. They've been provably sure. What turns on suspects that? since the very beginning of their what turns creation? On that? What about what the shape of the earth turns on the reliability of NASA? That's what I'm asking you. That's the fundamental source of where we claim no, to have not. all kinds of verification. No, of it's not. These pictures of earth from space. Act, it's not true. It'd just be the, the global consensus of physicists and the empirical literature that we've collected from the telescopes that we have. You used a telescope to see the earth as a ball from space? No, we don't need to. Well, that's what we're talking about. You asked me what's the relevance to it. I said they claim that they have pictures of the Earth being a globe in a, in space, and yeah, that's all dependent upon us believing space agencies. And so what about the people that, that knew that before NASA? You, what? So what about the people that knew that before NASA? They don't have. 
you, why is it that you're not addressing my actual point, which is I am. All you're claiming this is all, all the state is rooted Earth in NASA. And and I'm asking, wait, are you not claiming that all the state is rooted hmm? in NASA? What? Are you not claiming that all, all this data is rooted in NASA? Pictures of the Earth from space. I also, I explained space agencies as well. Well, that's yeah. not the only way we we know that the Earth is, you know, spheroidal. Okay. It's so not just be, picture. Okay, never said it was. Uh, all right, then. So, so you would you acknowledge that it doesn't really matter what NASA says. There's a variety. Oh, it of matters. Other places it matters because in your opener, you invoked alleged pictures from I, the Earth from space. I, sure, I I didn't say anything about NASA though. Okay, so name one picture from space that's legitimate, and you take a picture of the globe in entirety. Just the you life feeds we just on YouTube about channels. It CGI. Just don't no, no the life feeds from from YouTube channels. You can you can literally one, watch one one life feed that shows the Earth being a ball in entirety. I don't know the name of it. Just Google it. Google well, it doesn't uh, exist. Life also, doesn't exist. Yeah, go I ahead. would also like to ask just why there isn't like a single flat Earth picture. Why we can't seem to get one. Why is there not a single globe Earth picture? So, yeah, that's what I mean about, like, the burden of what about is roof. I feel like every time I'm going to ask a question or, like, any logistics about anything with the flat earth, you just go. It's what creationists do with evolution, in my opinion. What's your obsession with always trying to turn into a religious conversation? The point here is that you because brought up. Funds you brought, wait, can I can answer I just that? Please say you just something without me a you question. both impulsively just interrupting ask, me. That would that, be awesome. So you asked me a question, hey, and hey, now hey, you're speaking hey, again, hey. but I'll let you finish all you the answered words. the question let's, let's, and then you I went to respond. Me, why do I always try to bring it back it. to okay, you guys, religion? Seriously, just shut, is, okay, Austin, if you want to go for another like 20 seconds, I'm going to let you do that. But then to be fair, you did ask Amy a question. So I, before it goes too far, I, I don't want to let you go more, for more than like 20 seconds. And then I got to give Amy a chance to answer okay. why uh, the okay. religion topic comes up so often. Okay, that question. Okay, whatever. Yeah, that was a rhetorical question, obviously, because we're not debating religion. But the point is that when you ask, why don't we have a picture of the earth being flat from space? It's disingenuous and hypocritical whenever you also don't have a picture of the earth being a globe from space. And yet you're claiming scientific consensus and evidence. We don't claim to be able to go to space. So it's a straw man and it's disingenuous. What about ism? Good rebuttal, dude. You're crushing. Wait, so I'm, I'm just going to assume you don't know what, what aboutism is. I know that you're not addressing the actual substance. Yeah, so let me, let me just tell you then what, what aboutism is. It's when somebody says, hey, so how do you explain X? And you need to go, well, but what about Y or, or, or this or that? How do you explain that? It's literally what you did. She asked you, why don't you have a picture of this? And you said, well, why don't you? Well, well, well how come you're asking me? Like, yeah, you just, what about it? To, to no, something I explained that question. we don't think you can go to space, Leo. Do you need a note? So you're saying, so, so then you're, you're, you're affirming that you don't have pictures. Of the, of the I flat. already said that we don't okay. think you can go to. I space. just want a clarification. That's fine. <laughs> Are you confirming like you don't have pictures also? If I might butt in and say something, it's um, we've had some major changes in technology in the last few decades, and the biggest change we've had is the digital camera, and we've had the ability now to record, you know, hours and hours of footage in very small amounts of space. So we can send these cameras up very, very high, something that we could never do for thousands of years. You know, we couldn't do this thousands of years ago. We've only been doing it for the best part of maybe a decade, two decades at the most. And we can send these balloons up to about 25 miles high. It's about the highest they go. And every single uh, non-edited and you know, non-fisheye lens image that we get proves and shows the Earth is flat. And not only that, you get no clarity whatsoever of the continents. Our atmosphere is too thick. So anything that they showed us from the late 60s or early 70s, pretending to show a blue marble from outer space, has to be fake because you can see the continents clear as day. They're just something's taken from an aeroplane through a round window. <laughs> so all the, all the evidence we have, all the pictures we have of the Earth prove that it's actually flat. Except the ones from the International Space Station. And I just want to make a comment that the reason that it often goes to religion although I think this is more about epistemological debate because we are arguing about what kind of tools we use. We're arguing about what kind of data I think Leo and myself extract mainstream science. And the reason I bring up creationists, or specifically to paint with a thin brush, the young earth creationists, is because what they do is they don't try to prove creationism. They know they can't. The flat earthers, in my opinion, know that they have a much harder uphill battle to try and prove that. And so what they try and do is they try and shudder the burden of proof. And that's why it is similar.
Okay, you're self-projecting because you don't have any actual physical. Did you guys not even listen to the opener that all physical measurements of the earth are using plain survey data? When you do geodetic surveying, you have to presuppose the sphere and combine the plain survey data. Every time that we use any military technology, it assumes a flat stationary plane earth, which means every single time that you have successful use case, that's physical empirical evidence of a stationary plane. So I would like to clarify for the audience, because you guys aren't seeming to be particularly uh, honest right now. There is no real picture of the earth as a ball from space in entirety. And the only one even claimed is 1972. Anyone that tells you anything different is lying. Himawari 8 is not ISS is not the whole earth, nor is it actually what the earth looks like. You can easily fake that with convexity lenses. There is no real picture of the earth being a ball from space and it's 2022 and they claimed they got one in 1972, but we still can't get one. All we get is CGI. That's not sketchy at all. So I wouldn't invoke anything to do with pictures of the earth. Sure. Why do people in the Northern hemisphere and people in the Southern hemisphere see completely different stars? Yeah, there's all kinds of reasons for that. So, so for one, you can easily replicate it. Well, are you going to listen to the answer? Or you just think, yeah, I, know I was saying like, go on, give me, give me. Oh, well, some. listen, I was saying yeah. it quietly. So you can easily replicate it with a type of container that would alter your perspective. You can do it with concentric circles on a piece of paper and literally what? move a container. I don't understand. I, I asked if you that. were going to listen. Yeah, but I'm not understanding what you're saying. What do you, what does, what do concentric circles have to do with this? I, I'm so well, listen confused. carefully. Like, okay. Wh why do people in two different hemispheres see? So first off, where is the dividing line between the hemispheres on your model? Okay, maybe. Is there anything you can listen. pull up and, maybe, and give and give me where you would defy, divide the two hemispheres, yes. or do you just deny the concept of hemispheres? I mean, these are serious questions I'm asking. Well, they're stupid questions, and you keep interrupting. I don't care. Answers. Are you going to answer them? If you, you stop gonna, are you going to run from them? Well, you probably have to stop interrupting me. I think what yeah. we're going to have to so, do is go into two-minute sections just to be sure there's not too much interrupting, though I appreciate your passion on both sides. So go ahead, Austin. We'll give you two minutes, and then we'll give uh, Leo two minutes as well. And then Flat Earth Aussie, we haven't heard from you for a while. but we'll, I, I, there, By the way, Flat Earth Aussie, a.k.a. Iron Horse, the only reason I keep muting you is, is there's just a little bit of feedback bouncing off because I, I think it's because of the mobile. So that's nothing personal that I keep muting you uh, in particular. But go ahead, Austin, for two minutes. Yeah, so I was trying to explain it. There are many different observations that would explain it. You can use a solenoid or bar magnet. You will see this very thing, the way that the toroidal manifestation of magnetic fields, you can use a ferro cell or super cell. You see this literally exactly the same thing being two different sets. But in addition to that, I, it could also be demonstrated and replicated with perspective alone. If you have some type of containment, we can literally use a little tight, little like dome-like container and we put it over concentric circles. And then based on where you're looking, out, it will look like it has convergence around a central point and it will look like it's going the opposite direction. I showed it on the last debate on here. So you can literally replicate it. Now, actually, the stars debunk the globe, though, because we can see Polaris many degrees below the equator and we can see the Southern Cross many degrees above it. So the stars don't help you at all as well as I take time lapse of the star trails and they never intercept with the marine horizons and the Earth's curvature is supposed to be physically blocking the sky, but the time lapse doesn't actually intercept with the marine horizon ever. I've taken it dozens of times. And in addition to that, you never see shooting stars or meteors coming up from the horizon, which you also would have to on the globe. So stars debunk the globe. I explained two explanations. I explained it on a flat Earth. So there you go. It seems pretty simple. The claim exclusivity is disingenuous. Give you two minutes. I'm sorry, but that doesn't answer my question. Um, where, where, where do, where do you draw the line between the northern and the southern hemispheres on your model? Like, if you could show me a map, maybe share your screen, show me a map, and draw the line where, or the circle rather, where you divide the, the northern and some southern hemisphere. That's what I was asking you. Not nothing that you said answered that question. You asked about stars, the alleged. No, I asked you about what I just clarified that I asked you about. Did you have an answer to you that question, or are you right? going to keep, or are you going to keep running to something else? There's an arbitrary line called the equator. We don't even claim definitive maps. What's wrong with the equator on the flat Earth? I, I didn't say there was anything wrong with it. I asked you a question. Well, keep, you got your where would you define it? Where would the same you define place? The, equator? the, the same, same place. place. Okay, so you assume a, a, a sphere. Got it. Awesome, Amy. Anything you want to say? Sure. I want to do one actually <laughs> final leaf branch. Another reason that I shouldn't harp on religion is because not only was Aristotle pagan, but it was medieval Christian theologians, these scholars of the time, who kept 
the knowledge that the world was round for the past few thousand years. So this actually should bring atheists and theists together because it's it would have to include all of them in the massive conspiracy. I will say pilots will go out of their way to tell you they need the world to be round so that they don't hit into bodies like mountains. And so um, I, the other thing they all often will bring up containments, the gas in the container and things like that without, well, ignoring that gravity is the force that is pushing down. And so sure, if you don't have gravity, oh, it would be pushed. very mysterious or we, yes, um, but uh, it would be, we wouldn't know what was under uh, going on. But because of that, we do. Two minutes is wow. up. So two minutes to either Flat Earth Aussie or Witset, or you can split it. You got it, bro. Yeah, I wouldn't mind having to say. Um, yeah, Leo is very concerned about hemispheres, and you know, like that basically means half a sphere. And yeah, you can also have a sphere of influence. A sphere doesn't necessarily mean a three-dimensional circular object. You know, they, something can still be a sphere or a realm without necessarily being a circle. And as I've as I said in my opener, actually, is that the equator just happens to be the equidistant point from the fixed northern star that was used for thousands of years for navigation that they decided they'd gone into the underworld. So therefore, they invented this idea of sphericity because they couldn't understand any other reason why something would appear to go beneath the horizon. And one of the best proofs of this is actually is Africa because before the Suez Canal was ever built, there's a place at the tip of South Africa called Cape Good Hope. Now, it got this name, Good Hope, because that's what you needed to get around it. And if you look at the AE map, the Acqui Azimuthal Equidistant map, you can clearly see that if you head south to go around West Africa, you're clearly going way, way, way out of reckoning. So that's what these sailors are doing. If they weren't actually going southeast the whole time, they're getting further and further and further from the coast because the coast actually goes severely towards the east as it goes south. And so because they believed they were on a globe all this time, because that's what some smart Greek dude decided to tell them that that's what they were on, they were so far out of reckoning that they thought they'd gone far enough back east once they reached far enough south that they were nowhere near to going around South Africa. And so that is how you, that's one of the best proofs that we have from antiquity to show how wrong the globe always was and always had been. In fact, if they had it just gone slightly west, they might have even found South America by that stage because they were so close to it. But all they were really interested in at the time was getting to India where, you know, rather than going the Silk Road full of all the bandits and whatnot, that it was considered safer to sail around Africa and go back up again and to India. So, so many ships ran aground. That was two minutes. And that's why I was saying, yeah, Cape of Good Hope, because that's what you need. Leo or Amy, or both? I just wanted to say one of the reasons we know the world is round is because of circumnavigating the Earth, because of being able to go in a single straight line and getting back to where you originally started, which would not be possible on anywhere but a globe. So I know they try and present their flat pancake, uh, which once again, I have seen that and it makes no sense to me. It brings up all sorts of other logistical problems. Like I wanna know on the flat disc model, why is it colder in the South Pole? Like, is there any, well, why? Uh, there seems yeah, the to North be Pole. ice. Yeah, or uh, 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 is it the- Why is there like North never Pole? snow in the east? The ice dome either. is out here, but then there's a center. Why is the center cold? Because the sun goes around the equator and sunlight is what produces heat when the light hits the ground and reflects off of things. And so because it's coming in such an angle of incidence, it doesn't matter how far south the sun appears to go during our summer, we still have longer, hotter summers but Antarctica is still so far outwards that even at its lowest point, when the sun is nearest to us, making the biggest circle around us, it still doesn't have enough effect to even get above about zero degrees in Antarctica. That's exactly how you'd expect on our flat Earth. And why Steve, would it be any different between the North and South Pole on a globe, right? Because it should be exactly the same. It actually makes perfect sense on a the flat Earth. the Earth is tilted. Oh, that, the Earth's tilted, so the South Pole stays cold? That's your answer? Well, the, that is the answer, yes. It's not, not the answer. The, the North Pole gets a very yes, big it is. summer. 
And I didn't say they don't have summers. I said it doesn't get warm as a result of uh, them not receiving nearly as intense sunlight. That's a result of the of of the tilt and the rotation of the Earth. Yes, but I had a more interesting question. Wait, 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 real fast. Why would the equator not be? Why would that equator Um, be the hottest? So I think if I remember right, forget. I might be wrong about this. Was it the two minutes for uh, Leo and Amy yet? Because I can give you a chance to ask the question, uh, Austin, but only after this. Well, I also want to know. Well, this is what's going to. They're just not answering any of the questions, James. So this isn't a debate anymore. This is one person says something, and then they just literally intentionally breeze past it and talk for two minutes with sophistry. So I don't know. In about ten seconds, I I, I can give you a chance to ask that question, Austin. But I just want to give that last, roughly ten seconds that was left there to Amy and Leo. Well, I just want to point out. I don't think when they say that it sounds like projection. I know they say that we are doing sophistry and not answering questions, but when we present empirical evidence, when I ask for integrity of things like the dome, which we should get to in a second, or no one answered what was under it, why there can't be a 2D picture on a large scale. I would also like to know, now that you're saying that both poles are both cold, how far away is it? But all yours. Awesome. Okay. So what happens is they don't answer any of the points we make and then they spam us with like 50 questions and then claim we don't answer. No one claims you there's anything beneath a flat earth. You can only go 7.8 miles down. So no one makes any claims. You claim something 3,959 miles down, but you also can't go any further than eight miles. So why don't you tell me what's beneath 7.8 miles since you think you know, how'd you prove it? We don't claim to have pictures of the earth. In fact, the fact that the equator is the hottest place on the earth debunks the globe because according to the globe, it's tilted at 66.6 degrees. So the direct ray of nine degrees no. doesn't hit the equator exactly so that actually debunks the globe it doesn't debunk the flat earth and i actually have a picture a video can i share my screen it's t- 13 seconds long when someone claims that that pilots have to assume the earth is curving and spinning to fly planes so they don't hit mountains right which is just it's just a lie so i mean i'm gonna play this 13 second clip as the end of my time here because it's just i don't understand why we have to be disingenuous so um Hopefully this mind, can be heard. If you if you're sharing video, they won't be able to hear it unless when you do click screen share, you'd have to click share um, audio also. So if you click share, okay, and then once you select, I think we're good. So basically, it's like the Earth spins and curves, but you fly the plane like it's flat and stationary. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe so it could be flat and stationary. Okay, one more time. Right. Yeah. So basically, it's like the Earth spins and curves, but you fly the plane like it's flat and stationary. Yeah. So it could. Yeah. Okay. So sorry. I just, I'm just. It's frustrating to me when people act like you have to fly. You have to act like the Earth's a ball to fly a plane. That's patently false and absurd. You would die if you did that. We'll kick it over to Leo and Amy for two minutes. Yeah. So I, I don't care what a couple pilots say. I care about like the actual systems of navigation that are utilized. Um, also. Uh, I wanted to get back to to the question that I was at, that I wanted to ask before. Um, what is the what is the diameter of this this flat plane that is the Earth? We don't we don't make claims about that. So you don't know you don't know what the diameter of the of the flat plane that is the Earth is. is what we don't saying. even assume that there's like a circular diameter. It's illegal. To so you're saying it could be infinite. It could be infinite. I didn't claim that. Well, so but you, so you don't know you don't know what it is. I just what said that it's illegal to privately. Okay, go yeah. Okay, south okay. Latitude. Also, the uh, the the, the yeah, tilt right. the tilt of the Earth is twenty three point four degrees north on its axis. What's that off of ninety degrees? I don't, I don't know. I don't know where you're getting sixty six point six degrees. Ninety minus twenty three. You don't measure off of ninety degrees. Do you know anything about trigonometry? You don't measure. Oh. That's not how you measure angles. Really? Yeah. Wow, you're just crushing today, dude. You measure them, you measure them off of off of zero degrees. Oh yeah. So the, the view, you, you would measure the x axis a- angle of tilt in either direction based off of where the x axis is, which is yeah. the zero well, point. So yeah, and it, yeah. it's, it's, it's perpendicular basic, to the basic plane. Basic just, just, hold on, one. Just there's a little bit of if if uh, both oh, sides are yeah. talking, they can't hear either of you. So just to be sure that we have it, where it's, uh, I want to give you a chance to respond to the questions, Austin. But I also want to Leo, if you have, wrap up that point, and then I just want to make sure that Austin had enough time to respond to the actual question. Yes, so you you go off of an axis, and, and the, the the axis that from which you're measuring is 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 zero, so, and then you go from there, and then orthogonal to that axis in some defined direction, um, 
assuming you're in a space where you can do that, gives you gives you your 90 degrees and also another dimension. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So you can take it from 90 degrees either way. It's objective that it's running perpendicular or something. So that was just a, that was just a grasp of straws, non sequitur to anything being talked about. You said you don't care about what two pilots say. It's not what two pilots say. It's what every single documentation of any plane ever flown ever says. It's designed to fly over a flat stationary earth objectively. And you claimed about the navigation. I just explained it to both you guys. So there's something called a great circle route. She claimed circumnavigation is impossible on a flat earth, which is also just patently wrong. You can go east to west, updating relative to north and come back to where you started doing a circle on a flat earth. But you cannot fly a great circle on the meridian north to south on a globe earth because it's first of all legal to circumnavigate and no one's ever done it and secondly uh, you would actually have to be updating for the earth moving underneath you east uh, the entire way so over five and a half hours going 550 kilometers an hour you'd have to adjust 3,171 kilometers to the left or to the east and you never do that so literally great meridian routes flying planes debunk the earth also everything you're saying is actually backwards in a second may I in fact can I share my screen sure not, no, no one's going to address the point again. I don't even know what you said. I don't know what you're talking about. So <laughs> it's just, it's just like gibberating at this point. I don't think they don't realize that the earth is actually orbiting the sun and they'd just rather ignore the fact that it's going 66,600 miles per hour. Why would I <laughs> ignore that? Earth. That's just a basic uh, facts. I don't well, that's basically what, what you like are third ignoring. graded third. Well, well I'm not ignoring it. It's just basic. Why would I talk about it? I just, hold on. I, I do. Amy, I think, had somebody they wanted to show Iron sure. Horse uh, and Leo, but we'll give you guys, we'll give Leo a chance to speak after for the remainder of the two minutes, and then we'll come to you, Iron Horse, I promise. Well, I just wanted to go over, and I wanted to know if they had any tests. This is a paper on another taste of sp uh, space-time curvature and relativity. Just quick abstracts. Now that's our author, Eddington, has successfully measured the space-time curvature by the edge of the sun, thereby confirming Dr. Einstein's remarkable forecast. An additional test of relativity comes to mind. So this is just that. We then have the curvature of the Earth. And I will just read after going after 72,000 feet upwards, they saw the curvature of the horizon. So you can check out this paper on nature. And then finally, from the University of Nevada, you can go over why we know the Earth is round. But what I would like to know is why you guys think that it is flat in any published papers. And when I often ask for published papers or anything in the peer reviewed community, I get that this isn't fair, but is there any universities that support? Amy, I don't think you're on the right tab. Am I not on the right tab? Hey, wait, is this the Eric tab at the top? Oh. Is, is that what you're on? No, uh, it's just you, you had said nature, and so I was like, wait, but that's just Eric. Do, 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 do. Do, do. While Amy's pulling that up, I want to remind you a couple of things, folks. If you enjoy these debates and want to see more, hit that like uh -huh. button as that boosts us in the algorithm, and we appreciate your support. The floor is yours, Amy. And I apologize to the entire audience. That was just me having a goober moment. But another test of space-time curvature and relativity. Everything I was saying also is accurate uh, to what I was just saying. I just want to show the actual journals. And then I wanted to actually know if you guys have any journals or any models from peer review institutions. Because it seems like... These are the guys you don't trust, the universities, the academics, the peer review journals. It's called a pill to authority fallacy, right? And a pill to majority fallacy. That's very not what rudimentary, that is. very, very rudimentary fallacies. Just like your picture there. No one thinks that's the earth. That's called a straw man fallacy. Every time that we make a point and you ignore it, that's called a red herring fallacy. Everything you guys are doing is fallacious, right? And what, so what you're doing is called the fallacy fallacy, well, where you just list off minutes. a bunch of fallacies. I've got to give two minutes to Austin. 
Yeah. yeah. So no, I'm specifically addressing the context of the fallacies that you're using. That's literally yeah, what you're doing. And uh, so right here, I can explain to you, there are tons of people, like you mentioned Arthur Eddington, they supposedly saw a star behind uh, the eclipse, right? Because most of the people, they just Google answers. They don't even know them. They just repeat what the article says at the top. So I'll help you out. They said they saw a star around the eclipse. Well, Arthur Eddington is right here saying that based on Mickelson Morley, it appears that we only had one viable alternative. And that means that the uh, the uh, velocity of the earth through space might happen to have been nil. That's a quote from Arthur Eddington talking about how the earth could be stationary. And then right here is Einstein saying, I've come to the conclusion no optical experiment could ever prove that the earth is moving. Here's another one from Einstein saying, I've come to the conclusion that there's no terrestrial experiment that could ever prove that the earth is moving. Stephen Hawking in 2007 said you can't prove that the earth is moving so all these claims you're making about relativity and all this stuff the people that actually proposed it said you can't prove it's actually true that's what relativity says and there's no physical empirical evidence for it and it's been debunked on the cosmological and quantum scale i've explained that many times so the problem there is that it's it, when they say you can't prove it what they mean is that when you look at the mathematics of relativity um so so a good example to sort of paint the picture here is if you are in a in a car driving down the road at 100 kilometers an hour and you go past a post that's, that's on the side of the road, you're going past that post at 100 miles an hour. But there's no difference mathematically in the mathematical expressions or in the equations there between the car moving past the post, say, north at 100 kilometers an hour or the post moving past the car south at 100 kilometers an hour. But that doesn't mean that when you see a car go past the post at 100 kilometers an hour that you don't see it, that it's the car moving past the post. What is being shown is that there, there's just an intrinsic symmetry entailed in the equations. Um, that's so, not what he so said. That, that, that's all that they were expressing there when they say that they can't prove it is that you can you can show that the earth is moving, but you could also just take the earth, make it stationary and then just move everything around it at the same speed and you'll get the same thing mathematically, much the same way that if you do car past post or post past car, they're mathematically equivalent. That that That's all that they were saying. And Stephen Hawking has, in fact, um, uh, uh, clarified that's what he's saying. And I just also want to point out it's not an argument mm. to authority. We are trying to talk about what the actual authorities are. So I will ask again if you have specific journals, if there is some sort of scientific peer consensus that you would be able to appeal to. I want to go back to this. So I have the first oh, nature God. article, another test of space-time curvature on re relativity. I can screen share again if you no. would like well then i guess we'll just you get two minutes a piece of scattergun points i, I understand yeah. i'm timing it points i made one point what are you talking about dude? she's scattergun true. points right now so she's, she's not on. it's not we our fault give, you can't right, follow the discussion five seconds don't self-project your insulation that you guys each have two minutes on each team go ahead amy Oh, no, it's just I, as long as he's conceding that relativity is empirically sound, that gravity is empirically sound. If not, we're going to have to go back into those articles. He wasn't able to present any articles of his own. He said it was a fallacy when it wasn't. So uh, these are the actual authorities. So I don't know who he would appeal to beyond himself. Go to Austin for two minutes. OK, so. He's just objectively wrong. He said what he is saying. That's not what he's saying. He literally says, in context of special relativity, giving a speech on Mickelson Morley being what led him to come up with special relativity, is that he came to the conclusion that no optical experiment could ever prove the Earth is spinning. Not that the, yeah, he has another quote that he explains that the coordinate systems could be interchangeable. That's not what he's talking about here, though. He then goes on to a further quote, which I've actually read special and general relativity obviously has, and that's what this quote is from. And he explains in excruciating detail that what he's saying is no no terrestrial experiment could ever prove the motion of the earth arthur eddington said that in context of michelson morley the only other alternative would be that the velocity of the earth would happen to have been nil they are not talking about mathematical relativity
relativity. They are talking about how they actually can't prove it because of relativity. And he makes it very clear. He's saying that no optical or terrestrial experiment could ever prove the motion of the earth. And this is cited in stubbornly uh, elusive illusion or whatever that is called by uh, um, Stephen Hawking in 2007, where he explains you can never use any terrestrial experiment to prove that the earth is motion. I mean, is in motion. And that's literally what relativity is saying. So it, yeah. literally what he said is patently false. It has nothing to do with just math. Because it's motion is relative. How you can't prove it. It's literally, seconds. it's literally so. wrong. So because the motion is relative. Um, well. Go ahead. Go well, ahead, you say uh, motion is relative, but what about reality? Now, in reality, that car might have been moving, but the post is standing still, and that's reality. So you can be mathematically correct about something, but be still completely wrong about reality itself. Exactly. So the, car moving, the car is moving, but, well, that's what relativity is all about. It's saying... Exactly. I've got to give it the 40. Earth is stationary and not moving. The sun is moving. Or alternatively, the sun is standing still, even though it's half a, uh, going over half a million miles an hour. Um, but alternatively, you can say it's still and the Earth is moving. Mathematically, that's correct. But in reality, what's happening is the Earth is still and the sun is moving. So uh, reality is basically just making up stories to try and explain why reality doesn't work according to the expectations of people who would like to believe we live in a spinning ball hurtling through space. Okay, We're not in space. And Amy. Uh, at the bottom of the moon. I would also like to go maybe to this dome because I want to know we kind of went over last time well, I would love to know really what it's made out of what's its integrity if it's going to last forever why we can't seem to get scientific evidence of it uh, don't know if Leo I, I well, I, I don't I don't know anything about a dome. I mean, we our GPS satellites hit fourteen thousand five hundred miles above the surface of the Earth, so I, I don't understand that. Um, no, I just I I don't even know really know what to say because I would have to give a, a thirty eight hundred dollar community college lecture on relativity, and I don't really want to do that. So um, the, I, there's really not not a lot to say. I mean, everything they said was correct. It just accords with what I'm saying that the mathematics there there are symmetries in the mathematics in which you can um, you you can sort of transform the coordinates of systems and get the same results. So using fancy terminology that you yourself don't really understand um, to try to make a point that you don't really understand is just not it's not going to be good for you. For you, you can't measure the motion of the Earth from the Earth because motion is relative. You see, in special relativity, when you actually go like watch lectures on it, you learn about something called inertial frames of reference. And so the Earth is contained in an inertial frame of reference. You couldn't show that it's moving from its own frame of reference because its motion in its frame of reference is relative to transformations or boosts to other frames of reference and the, the, the discrepancy between them is the difference in the motion of those two objects. Motion is a relative concept. This was known even before Newton. Thank you very much. And Flat Earth Ozzy as well as Austin. Yeah, once again, it's just um, moving the goalpost, so to speak, by saying, well, inertia actually means the art of staying still. So when you say an inertial frame of reference, well, it, it's a really, it's a meaningless claim. And, and that's basically what science usually does, is it tries to obfuscate everything in the fancy term so that the average person can understand it. Whereas when somebody really understands the subject, they're able to explain it in such a way that even the, the, you know, the lowest IQ person can actually understand it. That's how you know you know a subject, because you're able to make others understand it. So the more you try and obscure it in weird you know, references and whatnot, inertial frame of reference. Well, that's basically saying standing still. So, yeah, the Earth is standing still. Everything we've ever done experimental-wise proves the Earth is staying still and the other things we observe are the things that are moving. And never once does that prove that the Earth itself is what's moving while the other things are staying still or moving as well. And and yet the, the heliocentric model is trying to insist that everything's moving, that our sun itself is going 514,000 miles an hour. Now, that's absolutely ridiculous. We see it wafting overhead. It's absolutely ludicrous. Once you, even if you get to that speed, because first of all, you've got to say that you're spinning on your axis 
at a supersonic speed, it's about Mach 1.35. Then you've got to say we're going around the sun at approximately Mach 87, Mach 86.8. And then you've got to say that the sun is moving about 670 Mach. And all the globe ever has to argue against that is saying, no, but sound doesn't exist in space, so therefore you're wrong. It's, you know, they, it's got nothing to do with the sound itself. It's to do with the fact that we're talking about speeds and we're talking about incredibly huge speeds none of which have ever been detected apart from watching the sun itself moving 15 degrees per hour and we watch it coming towards us it seems to get higher and as we watch it go away it seems to get lower and that's exactly how perspective works something i've proven by watching chemtrails i've watched the plane come towards me spraying a chemtrail and the plane seems to be flying straight up and then i've filmed it and as it goes over i have filmed it going away it seems to be going straight down 10 minutes later that chemtrail has drifted across the sky and you can see it is absolutely perfectly parallel and flat to the ground Time. which is in itself a flat stationary earth can i just address that i would first of all no like to know how they can think an atmosphere can survive and if it's the dome then i would I like to know. know it was your turn amy i thought oh, it was your turn I, to not listen talk it right now two it's, minutes i thought we were doing minutes, two and two does. Iron Horse just finished on behalf of the flat side, so now. Okay, so then, so they just get two minutes total, then also, right? Correct. So they don't get to both talk forever, then. Yeah, I've been timing it. It's been two minutes each side. Okay. Okay. Been a very fair amount. Uh, But I just want to know how an atmosphere uh, would stay on there. I would like to. My uh, saying that is the creationists to go to or the flat earthers seem to be their job is to sound technical while the scientist's job is to convey information i don't know how much more time is left but i do want to screen share um one more time i just would like to get this addressed the fact that i want to know that the National Geographic magazine of January, which contains a long account of flight by Captain A.W. Stevens, contains an earlier photograph taken by him in the Andes from a height of 21,000 feet, which also shows the curvature of the horizon from nature. So I just want to know, like, what journals they're getting, why they disagree with the people that are submitting these. or hmm, How much time do we have, James? 56 seconds left. 50 se- Okay, that's perfect. I, I shouldn't take all of it, but maybe I will. Um, so I find it interesting that our opponents are sitting here talking about, huh, well, you guys don't seem to understand relativity. No, no, no. See, Einstein and all these, and Hawking, they were saying this. And I mean, what's it himself said? Well, you, you, you obviously haven't read, you know, his book, uh, Relativity, the Special and General Theory. Well, I have, and this, that, and the other. But then I start using just slightly more complex terminology. And then, oh, well, you need to, you, you need to dumb this down, you know, like oh, you're just throwing out all this fancy term. I just that that that, that there seems to be a, a disequivalence there. I find that funny. Um, they just reiterated that. Well, uh, 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 Iron Horse just re- reiterated the same thing. Well, there, there's symmetries in the mathematics between it being the Earth moving and you know everything else stationary or everything else moving and the Earth stationary. And I already explained how you have that in specifically Time. the equations of relativity with the the posts in the car. Austin and Iron Horse. Okay, so I obviously never said anything about complicating you being overcomplicated or over my head at all. I haven't talked since you went on your nonsense, non sequitur uh, rant. But the point is that if you have an inertial and accelerative frame, which is what you claim is Coriolis, so you need an inertial and accelerative frame for Coriolis. That means that whenever you're flying a plane on a great circle route on the Great Meridian, north to south, that you would have the Earth spin underneath the plane east, and you would have to account for it, right? Mm-hmm. So I pointed out to you that you were, you've been wrong every time you talked about relativity. You said that they were just saying about the math being interchangeable, which is objectively wrong. It's not about the math. It's saying we can't prove it with optical experiments, meaning using lasers or any types of light. We can't use terrestrial experiments. It's literally what it means in the context he was talking about. Mickelson Morley was, was interferometry, which failed to measure the 30 kilometers per second around the sun's orbit. But then Michelson Gell Pearson matched it perfectly with the 98% of the prediction print shift. So you're just you're just hand wave dismissing everything with sophistry. And that's why this is really frustrating. 
frustrating and I can't call you out live. So this is also Edwin Hubble explaining that if our misinterpretation of the redshift is inaccurate, if our interpretation of it's inaccurate, then we would actually have a limitation of spatial dimensions but with no more uh, redshifts or not primarily velocity shifts. And it's very simple that the earth is actually the center. It's a much more dense, much more local medium. Well, even within your own paradigm, they're now talking about their misinterpretation of redshifts and the lack of distribution into the sky. So long story short, the truth of the matter is, is Edwin Hubble and all these people, including Einstein, Arthur Eddington, and uh, Stephen Hawking and many others, they will tell you that there's no actual empirical evidence that the Earth is in fact revolving around the sun. It is, it is a philosophical criteria of the Copernican principle in which we think it is illogical that the Earth would be in a special, unique position, and that would be too arrogant of us. So we just interpret the data presupposing that the earth is moving philosophically because we could never actually empirically prove it. Yet then you have Globers run around talking about how they prove that the earth is moving and we're ignorant and stupid. But the truth is that the actual, she keeps on asking for consensus of scientists. I'm giving it to you. They all tell you that there is no scientific empirical evidence that the earth is moving. It's a philosophical decision, objectively. Can I just make the notion that uh, we are not saying that flat earthers are dumb or stupid or anything like this. I know that is a common thing to be looked down upon just for holding your views. I really am trying to come in here with an open mind, but if our bar as skeptics, as, as far as uh, Leo and I are concerned, I think we're both naturalists. And so uh, we want some sort of empirical prediction. Like models in science are actually able to make predictions that when put up to other scientists, they are forced to concede that point often against their own models because the data is driven there. And that's what I want to know. I mean, is there something, uh, can I also ask in this, is there something wrong with the paper? Is National Geographic, was that what I just presented? Are they in on it? I would love to know. I think we still have a few, uh, all you, Leo. Oh, 40 seconds, or 49 seconds. 49, okay, yeah. Um. I just keep hearing the same things I've already explained over. Um, yeah, many people who helped develop relativity and used it talked about the principle of relativity. I, I don't know why we keep reiterating the same point that's been answered three, three or four times now. I, I, I just, it blows my mind. There, there's, a, I'm hearing a lot of words and not a lot of content, and it's just, it's making it really hard to like respond because there isn't anything to respond to. It just, it's just gibberating to me at this point. I, I, I just, I don't know what to do. Wow. So yeah, I pointed out that uh, it's not actually proven; it's a philosophy. Now is, you, you misspoke and said that he was talking about the math. He's not talking. I didn't about misspeak. Math. He's not talking about just the math. He's talking about the fact that there's no experimental way that can ever be done to validate that the earth is in motion. And now you don't want to address the point, which is you guys hate the idea of religion. You hate the idea of philosophy. No, I don't. You hate your world. Your worldview is all, oh, I'm a natural. I probably know much da. more about philosophy. So Hold on. I got to Why are you interrupting every time? To speak. Okay. This is the point. It's ironic is I'm elucidating the uh, ironic nature of that position is the globe Earth, the heliocentric model is literally a philosophy built upon the philosophical worldview of the Copernican principle. And whenever you guys ask for, oh, you don't have consensus like her National Geographic, which says that you can see the curvature at 21,000 feet antithetical to the actual geometric claims. And Neil deGrasse Tyson himself will tell you that's ridiculous. But the point is that the actual experts you keep invoking and appealing to when we read them, like I just now read uh, the observational approach to cosmology, page 63 from Edwin Hubble. Because people were asking for the references. The truth is, when you go look at the actual people that brought you the model, including Stephen Hawking, they say, oh, well, we just choose this on uh, philosophical grounds of modesty 
we must believe that the earth is spinning around the sun because if not, that would mean we have a special position in the earth and that seems unfathomable to us. So you guys have been tricked into a philosophical worldview and you've conflated it into science and you don't have any exclusive scientific or empirical evidence for any of the claims and yet you promote it as if you've somehow definitively proven something and since a bunch of people believe it, we should just give way to you. But no, all empirical evidence shows the default positions here is a stationary plane. So you need to fulfill the burden of proof without philosophy. And I just well, want to say, philosophy, oh no, go Leo. I've been talking a lot. Ph philosophy is, v is very important in, in many, many ways. I, I don't think that what you mean by philosophy is what anybody with a PhD in philosophy means by philosophy. Um, you have no empirical evidence. You, you didn't explain why two people in two different hemispheres see, see different skies. You, you, you can't explain. You couldn't. You, I can tell you, you're not. If I asked you, you wouldn't be able to explain the seasons. You wouldn't be able to explain eclipses. You wouldn't be able to explain any of this. You don't have any empirical data. You don't understand relativity. You don't understand mathematics. You keep saying, well, there's no experimental. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There, there, there aren't experimental results that could prove it because of the symmetry in the math. Like the fact that you haven't yet followed what it is that I'm saying is explicit demonstration of the fact that either A, you're just willfully ignoring the points that I'm trying to make, or you do not have the cognitive capacity to follow along with the points that I'm laying out. I don't know which one it is. And this is why it's nigh impossible to move past past these points. You're not even following with the discussion. And this is what makes it hard to provide responses because you're just not saying anything. Amy, anything else? I don't know how much time we have. One minute and one second. I just want to keep on reiterating, although I would love to blame religion, I find that I have religious brothers and sisters on this subject and to not include them would be a mistake. Like I said, it is because of them that from a scholarly position, we continue to know the world is round. Many of them will, I would say, and hopefully stick by our side, throw things, uh, identity politics and all this stuff away, we are here because science and scientific consensus and scientific consensus, it's not a democracy in that you, not just anyone can throw, but anyone actually with expertise in the field can go out and submit things or at least go out and get your results and get them published in actual journals. I don't understand why that would be such a hard thing. And like I said, maybe this, yes, sure. All you guys. All right, Iron Horse, I've been talking a lot, so I'm going to let, let you go. I just want to read one quote, and then you got the rest of the time, bro. Because they're just skating past it using ad homs at this point. So, I mean, I think I'll let the audience decide. But um, anyway. This is Stephen Hawking. He said, all this evidence that the universe looks the same, whichever direction we look like, look might seem to suggest there is something special about our place in the universe. In particular, it might seem that we observe all other galaxies to be moving away from us. Then we must be at the center of the universe. <clears throat> there is, however, an alternative explanation. The universe might look the same in every direction as seen from any other galaxy, too. This, as we have seen, was Friedman's second assumption. We have no scientific evidence for or against this assumption. We believe it only on grounds of modesty. It would be most remarkable if the universe looked the same in every direction around us, but not around other points in the universe. Physicist Stephen Hawking explaining that it's a philosophical determination of modesty of the Copernican principle, and we have no scientific evidence for it, and that's the truth. And we have all the empirical evidence. Iron Horse, you got it. Yeah, cheers, mate. Um, yeah, you pretty well nailed it. Um, being philosophical, as where Leo is trying to say that um, you have to have a PhD in philosophy in order to understand philosophy, and I think that's the most erroneous thing, and that's the typical uh, standpoint from nearly everybody in the scientific field, is if you don't have credentials, then you're not being scientific or you're not equipped to deal with these things, whereas... You know, there's a great saying where they said that the greatest candle maker in the world would never have been the one to have invented the electrical light bulb. Every new advance that comes comes from somebody from the fringe who is thinking outside the circle, who has not been heavily indoctrinated or educated with the very things that they are saying. If you're not, uh, if you haven't studied all the other philosophers of the world, then obviously you're not a philosopher. Well. We're all philosophers, we're all scientists. We all have a valid point of view and everybody who questions things, that's being a scientist. So, you know, Amy only had evidence to show things of where they're educating children in schools and 
all of most nearly everything you're seeing in these science things, all, all these um, time. The things that they show, it's just about teaching children. It's about putting it into their minds before they've even had a chance to learn how to think for themselves. Whereas any yeah. free thinker, well, I, okay, that, that's time. time. I, I do want to say some of the links, the ones that I was originally showing, they were uh, college level uh, websites and universities trying to explain gravity to children. I was going back and forth whether I should show them because one of them was like the shadow test. But once again, I, I'm going back and forth because I don't want to be condescending. I don't want to be here and be like, this is for children because, you know, uh, this is an important to be. In fact, I'll even say I agree with what it gets it. I think this is a philo philosophy debate. I think this is a epistemological debate because in my opinion, Leo and I agree with the scientific consensus that is where we get our data from. And I believe that the other side relies on personal experience. If I am straw manning them, then they can explain it. But that is what I have seen so far. So going to what um, uh, what's it said, um, I, I, I never denied the importance of the philosophy. In fact, when I first spoke, I said that the philosophy is, in fact, very, very important. Um, so I, I, in fact, you could say I affirmed what you, what you said. So I don't know why, why you think you can attack me on, on that point, because it seemed that that's what you were trying to do there. Um, I, I don't think you could tell me what Einstein or uh, rather, uh, Stephen Hawking was trying to explain there when he was speaking. Um, but perhaps you can give it a go next time you have the chance to speak, uh, to flat earth Aussie, Um, oh, what was it that you said that I wanted to respond to? Somebody refreshed my mind. The first I philosophers? Can't I can't, oh, yeah. That. I never made the statement that you needed a PhD to understand philosophy. The statement that I made was that I don't think people with a PhD would understand the word philosophy the way that Witsit was using it, because I don't think that he was using it the way that it, it, he, it seemed that he was using it in a different way that a philosopher would use the, the term philosophy. So, the, so I, I did not make the statement that you have to have a PhD in philosophy to understand philosophy. We'll kick it over to Austin and Iron Horse. We're also going to go in the Q&A shortly, folks. So hang tight for that. Iron Horse and Austin, floor is all yours. I want to read another quote because uh, the reason it's important is obvious oh, that it's just philosophical preference pushed onto children as if it's scientific facts. You guys come say scientific consensus over and over and you want to breeze past the, the meat of the point. But that's not my problem. The audience will hear it. This is Edwin Hubble. Uh, he said, such a condition would imply that we occupy a unique position in the universe, analogous in a sense to the ancient conception of a central earth. This hypothesis cannot be disproven, but it's unwelcome. It would only be accepted as a last resort in order to save the phenomena. Therefore, we disregard this possibility. The unwelcome position of a favored location must be avoided at all costs. Such a favored position is intolerable. Therefore, in order to restore homogeneity and to escape the horror of a unique position, we must be compensated by spatial curvature. There seems to be no other uh, escape. Edwin Hubble explaining how they had to come up with this idea of relativity and keep pushing it and migrating it towards what the, the observations of the time because they can't prove that the earth is not central and stationary and special and they don't like the idea that maybe the earth was created and has a special position so they masquerade philosophy and religion as if it's science so it's very ironic that we are taught as if we are science deniers when we're, when we're clearly not and we're just calling out their religion. Iron Horse, anything? Otherwise, we'll kick it over. We got about thirty-eight seconds. No, I just say amen to that. Like he's he's basically nailed it. Um, that there is this philosophical standpoint that they don't want the Earth to appear to be special. Like we, it's not like we want it to be special. We didn't ask for it to be special. We don't expect it to be special. We don't think we're special just because we're on it. But it turns out that if the Earth does uh, stand in this unique position in the universe, that basically at the floor of it, then it kind of does make it special. And so we should embrace that. We should be thankful for it. And, you know, let's let's not just treat ourselves like we're insignificant little bits of random space dust. Time. We'll kick it I, over. So I'd, I'd like to jump in here, if I may, Amy. I'll, I'll, I'll be sure. quick because I only have no, a, a couple of points. We, we keep going back to this philosophical thing, but neither me nor, nor my partner here in this debate have, have, have denied 
the importance of that. I also noticed that, that Witsit didn't actually explain, I, I was expecting him to, he didn't explain what Stephen Hawking meant by what he said and what Edwin Hubble was talking about what he said, which reminds me that uh, we, he keeps going, well, here, let me give you this quote and let me give you that quote and let me give you this quote. This is what would be called a quote mine where one relies on snippets of quotes from people that they think support their position when in reality these people wouldn't support their position. Like all the people he's quoting wouldn't agree with the things that he's saying. The, the, like anybody that actually understands physics knows that they wouldn't agree with that. But um, what was being described was this idea that y- at any point in the universe is going to look like you're in the center of it because of its expansion and that being metric. But you can't prove that because we can't go to every point in the universe. So so that that's all they were expressing there. That's all I'd like to say. Go ahead, Amy. Amy? Yep, I have my unmute button went the other way okay i wanted to bring out that special to me i can't help but get excited because i i was trying not to bring up religion but i mean you went right back to god that we are a special creation and this is the main thrust behind why there is a flat earth i once again want to reiterate that i think that the vast majority of theists I can't even believe I'm saying this. Even young earth creationists would have to be on my side. They would say, sure, God was the creator. Nonetheless, we go with the scientific consensus because that is where all of the empirical evidence lies. And you would need a new model uh, to rebut that sort of scientific consensus. You got it. We'll kick it over to, let's see here, kick it over to Iron Horse and Flat Earth Ozzy. And then maybe what we'll do is maybe just for a a last minute, actually, well, since it's closings, we'll give two minutes to each side. And given that we had uh, the Globe Earth start, sorry, I am slow today. Globe Earth started, so we'll have the Flat Earth have the last word. So Globe Earth after... Iron Horse in Austin, and then one last time for Iron Horse in Austin. You can you can go, bro. I've been talking. I've been talking on. Cheers, bro. Um, yeah, it seems to me like Amy has been desperately trying to turn this into some sort of religious discussion, which, you know, like religion is basically just another form of philosophy in a way. But um, it's one that people, once they've sort of attached themselves to, seem to take it more seriously than one than say a philosophy from the scientific point of view is that you are adaptable to change and i think that's what flat earth is we we basically are we're, we're all philosophers we may be religious in some way or another like i was raised quite religious i stopped going to church when i was about 14 and i started looking into eastern religions you know buddhist and whatnot and basically the more i looked into things the more i started to accept the the, the christian religion so it's got nothing to do with the flat earth. Like a lot of people who do really believe in their religion find that the, the Bible has a lot of references towards flat earth. And if that gives them peace of mind and comfort and helps them to be better people, whatever, I, I, don't, see, I don't see any correlation between that and the scientific outlook of where we are. Like scientifically, have we developed, have we, detected any curvature scientifically have we detected any motion or is it all just philosophical it's all a mathematical equation sort of thing and that to me is not reality reality is what we can and do observe what we can and do actually detect and so basically philosophy should be about understanding reality and not about making things up and then making formulas to fit that so that it suits your argument you know stationary planet earth fixed at the bottom of the known universe is the reality we all live with we all experience from day to day we know water seeks and finds it stable i don't think that um there's any greater philosophy than the truth and that's the truth and then leo and amy i just want to First of all, thank all of our interlocutors. It has been great. And if you are out there in the chatosphere, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
And uh, yeah, I mean, I wish it could be religion, but Kent Hovind, C.S. Lewis, Lee Strobel, William Lane Craig, Stephen Meyer, these aren't people I would normally put in my camp, and yet they are. And that is because it is not just an atheist worldview, it is that we are willing to go where the science leads us. It is not an IQ thing. It is not a uh, uh, trying to look down or even win an argument. It is if you are open to the truth, if you are skeptical, you will go where the evidence lies. And that seems to be overwhelmingly for a round spherical Earth. You got it. Leo. Um, the only thing I wanted to say is, I I just I haven't really heard any, any good defenses of 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 the idea of a flat Earth. We, we we didn't hear any meaningful explanation of why people in two different hemispheres observe essentially they're completely different skies we we didn't hear explanations for you know the seasons we didn't hear explanations for eclipses we didn't hear explanations for gravity's ability to perfectly explain pretty much everything that it's been applied to um uh, we did hear witsit say that like it fails on the cosmological level despite anybody with any knowledge of cosmology knowing full well that general relativity is literally probably the greatest tool that cosmologists <laughs> use so that phrase really that's why i almost choked on my beer when he said it like that one really was I, what uh, i don't get it but uh, i'll leave it there given that we gave the lead or opening statement to leo and amy we'll give the final two minute witsit and iron horse then we're going to the q a folks all right i'm going to time myself iron horse so you get a minute too so yeah uh provably relativity's predictions on the cosmological scale are wrong this is just objective again as early as 1933 we found that only three percent of the mass predicted by relativity in the galaxies etc cetera, etc cetera. it's about distribution of what's in space and time and that's all that's there but there's dark matter and dark energy actually einstein said in the sense that physical properties must exist or does exist in ether but only in that sense it cannot be that of ponderable media so you don't understand it and you're self projecting onto me but objectively Relativity has been debunked on the cosmological and quantum scale. I can read Pittsburgh University right there. You have are. to give him his chance to speak, Leo. I'm sorry. I really am. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, and here it is. Quantum mechanics is incompatible with general relativity because in quantum field theory, forces act locally through the exchange of well-defined quanta. Pittsburgh or Stanford University. Of course, there's numerous ones. Everyone knows that it doesn't work and that relativity is complete is incomplete at the best. And so there's no evidence for that. Seasons work because the sun the sun moves closer or further away from a certain part of the earth. While so complicated, I explain the star trails are based on perception or based on magnetic holography. Let me guess these don't make any sense. So all right, Iron Horse, you can go because uh, that's a minute. Cheers, brother. Um, yeah, Leo seems to be a bit concerned about some of these things. They're, they're huge fields that could take you know, hours and hours for each one to explain, like, for example, eclipses. Basically, what we've noticed over the centuries is that these eclipses all occur in regular repeating patterns. So it's not a matter of having to believe one thing over another in order to understand that they can be predicted quite simply by the fact that they will keep happening at the same time every 18 odd years or whatever. So that's neither here nor there with either model. It still works for the flat Earth. Uh, the fact that we do see different stars either side of the equator simply is a matter of perspective. It's like anything that you see. If you travel to the next town, are you going to see the same buildings you could see in the town you were previously in? Of course not. Everything changes when you travel. So everything makes perfect sense if you start to grasp the sense of scale. And that's one thing I don't think the globes can do because they believe the sun actually sets below the horizon, whereas your actual horizon that you can and physically time. see is only a few miles away. And yet, you think the sun is going to be below that a few miles away? It should be 6,000 miles away at least, time. over 4,000 miles of drop. We're so going to jump into the Q&A. Do want to say, folks, thanks so much for all of your questions. Got to name a couple of things before we go into the Q&A. First, all of our guests are linked in the description below. You have been properly exposed to them now for about an hour and a half. So if you'd like to hear more, if you'd like to learn more about their positions, you can click on their links below right now in the description box. And that includes not just here on YouTube, but also as you may or may not know, 
all of our debates on Modern Day Debate are uploaded to our podcast, which also gets thousands of downloads, by the way. It's 100% ad-free. We don't make a dime off it. We hope it's useful to you. And our guests are linked in the description box there as well. So that includes Iron Horse, Wits It Gets It, Leo, and Amy, who are all linked in the description box there. Now, let's jump into these questions. I want to say thanks so much for your questions. I'm going to move through these as fast as humanly possible. This one coming in from Commercial Sound and Video. Thanks for your support. Didn't see a question, but let me know in the live chat with an at Modern Day Debate if you had one you wanted to attach. Deej says, Iron Horse already won. No need to continue thank you very much as i mentioned iron horse are you still in the hot tub <laughs> bloody eyes mate you're gonna get pruned <laughs> up in there all right this one coming up cameron hall says can the flurfs or i mean flat earthers please use their two collective okay well can they explain magnetic fields how can they work on your quote model since magnets can't be unipolar uh, yeah, it actually looks like we have a quadrupole, quadrupole data on the Earth, and every single magnet has um, a, what's called an inertial plane through the middle of it. So the better question is, how come with all the scientific consensus that we've been hearing about reiteratively all night, uh, they still can't explain the magnetic field on the Earth in the globe model, and Harvard explains why the dynamo threshold problem and many other things. So mag the magnetic field can't explain on the globe Earth, and it works perfectly on a flat Earth, as there is an inertial plane in every type of magnet that exists. You got it. This is coming on from Do Appreciate It. Light of the Twin Lamp says, James, hi. Uh, let's see. Are you a knife? Because you can cut butter with that Giga Chad jawline. That's very funny. I'm sorry I forgot to read your super chats the other night. We're going to read those in the post credit scene. By the way, Daniel Hakikachu's name is pronounced Hakikachu, like Pikachu with ha in the front. Malavia, thanks for your question, says, Wits it. T Jump has already given you the novel testable evidence you just choose to ignore it that's not our fault he jumped didn't do anything in the debate with him he just kept on like talking about magnet magnetic fields could only work on a globe and he's wrong harvard explains like i just addressed that they don't know how to explain it on a globe so yeah i don't know what you're talking about i've read all about the globe i learned all about it i read all the gravity claims all the modern claims all the modern problems i went out and tested the earth myself so it's not a lack of evidence that's the problem it's a lack of lack of legitimate physical empirical evidence to prove that the earth's a ball that spins that's the problem you got it and by the way that was that over a year ago you and uh tjum debated that was a good one that's in the debate yeah it's been here. a while it, probably two years maybe that was a good one, but it's in the debate library here on Modern Day Debate if you want to check it out, folks. S. Aston says, within, I find your verbal reputations of gravity uncompelling. I think they meant wits it. I find your verbal representations of gravity, un refutations, I think they meant, of gravity uncompelling. Please show us your corrections and calculations to the formula. Uh, you don't know about dark matter and dark energy. You didn't know that you're way off with your prediction on the cosmological scale and also on the quantum scale. They want to try to differentiate it and say that it doesn't have anything to do with relativity. It objectively does, though, because relativity was the proposed background or the medium in which everything moves within in space. OK, and it was claimed specifically to have specific characteristics and not to be that of ponderable media. OK, that's what Einstein said and explains. And yet now we have all kinds of information showing that, you know, for your expansion rate and for the lack of mass, et cetera, you need some other component that makes up 95 percent of it, actually 96 point something. So that's the, the objective truth is relativity is at least incomplete. It doesn't address most of what's there and it doesn't work on the quantum scale. I just read it. It's very easy to understand that superposition alone would refute relativity. There is no evidence for gravity on the quantum scale or the cosmological scale. So if it was actual, it would be on all scales. So, yeah, it's objectively not correct, and every person in the field knows that. Can I provide a quick response to that? Go for it. Um, so, again, like literally any cosmologist will tell you they took heavy general relativity because it's their most important tool. Like literally, if you don't believe it, just go to a university and ask. Um, dark matter and dark energy, we don't know what they are, but we certainly know they're there, and there's empirical evidence that they're there, and that's because of relativity and the relativistic effects that they have on the environment around them, thus confirming relativity. And that's all I'd like to say on that. No one disputes that they assume relativity and gravity in cosmology. No one disputes that dark matter and dark energy comes from the relativistic application. That's the point. It doesn't adequately predict what we observe. So we had to make up two different ideas and conceptual abstractions to make up for the mathematical discrepancies. Relativity 
is not correct. Gotta it's objective. To the next one. We've got a lot of questions. This one for you, though, Leo. Elijah Freeman says to Leo, Paul Larson, planetarium director, says at International International Space Station height, with 3% of Earth being perceivable, the horizon would look flat, not curved. <laughs> Rebuttal? Yeah, I don't, I don't even know what that means. I don't know who that is. I don't know what they're talking about. You got it? This one from Mark Reed. Good to see you, Mark, says Witsit. Why is it always about NASA? What about Chinese Space Agency, Russian Space Agency? What about any of the 77 agencies from different countries around the world that say that the Earth is a globe? Oh, I... Oh, so, okay. He went in the other room. I was like, Austin, you're quiet. So let me come back to that question once Austin comes back. Let's or see. did NASA take him? This I one said. coming from the Levoy. Well, let's we'll leave that. Well, actually, let's hear from you, Flat Earth Aussie. They say, does the Flat Earth model have a dome or no dome? What do you think, Iron Horse? Oh, you're on mute still. I'm muted. Yeah. Sorry. yeah. Um, oh. Yep, I'm a, I'm of two minds about that. I believe it could well be domed, but um, when when I read various descriptions of the firmament, there's a, at least three translations of that from the Bible. One which says it's stretched out like a tarpaulin. One says it's beaten like flat metal, and the other says like molten glass. And I believe that if somebody had never seen a frozen lake before uh, and seen ice, then that description fits all of it. So it could be a flat sheet of ice that's sort of like hovers above us by the pressures of the various gases and stuff beneath us. And so it could more or less be a frozen hydrogen or you know, the, one of the lightest gases. But it doesn't sort of rule out the fact it could also be dome-shaped because it might eventually take on the shape if, in fact, it is supported by some sort of wall at, outside Antarctica surrounding it. So I'm, a, I'm very open-minded about it, but I believe it could be just as flat as the Earth itself. You got it. This one, oh, awesome. They did have one for you while you went to the restroom. This one coming in from Mark Reed says, What's it? Why is it always about NASA? What about Chinese Space Agency or Russian Space Agency? Or what about any of the 77 agencies around the world that say that the Earth is a globe? Austin. None of them claim to have a real picture of the globe in entirety from space. Not one of the 77. If you've seen like the Chinese landing the rover on the moon, it's hilarious. It's hands down the fakest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It's even worse than like our faked moon landings. So we just don't turn to governmental space agencies. I guess the idea, the premise is you think they're all in on it. They're all lying and blah, blah, blah. Uh, they all agree to the Antarctic Treaty. So, yeah, they are an objectively on an agreement that we can't privately and freely explore past the 60th South Latitude. Long story short, none of those places actually offer a real picture of the Earth from space, even to be claimed to be real. So, yeah, they're pretty useless as to this discussion. You got it. And this one from uh, the Batman. Folks, I want to remind you, we're looking for substantive questions. Talking about so-and-so is afraid to debate Witset or so-and-so is afraid to debate me. It's not as substantive as uh, we're looking for for the Q&A. So we are skipping over just pure insults. This one coming in from David George says, where did Witset hear about dark matter? Uh, what did I hear about dark matter? Uh, I don't know when I first heard about it some years ago based on the cosmic microwave background. You can look at like the European Space Agency explaining the problems with the cosmic microwave background and ma many other things. Uh, and then I found out that actually dark matter, what we now call dark matter, the discrepancy of dark matter was known for a very long time, as early as 1933. It isn't like a new problem. It's just relativity is the best explanation we have to this day to explain things like Michelson Morley with special relativity and then general relativity. So it just hasn't been updated or replaced. Uh, dark matter isn't a new problem. And I first heard about it because of the cosmic microwave background and how they called the distribution being central to the earth, the axis of evil. Because again, this is a philosophical worldview or religion, and they, you know, science doesn't denote things as morally evil because it disagrees with your theory. So, yeah, cosmic microwave background. You Can I comment on? Do we do we have to go forward or? Go for it's it. really quick, just on the axis of evil. There is no axis of evil. This has to do with um, um, pole measurements of the cosmic microwave background, and they only exist in like a few of them. And there's at least fourteen hundred different measurements. This is not. This is not even a statistical anomaly. This one coming in from, do want to say, uh, 
Sean Hawkins. By the way, for some reason, I don't know why you were triggered when I called out somebody about not attacking the guests based on demographic <laughs> variables. As always, we want to follow YouTube Terms of Service. So, Sean Hawkins, you're just going to have to learn how to deal with that because I did rebuke SH. Maybe you thought that I was talking to you when I said SH. There's an actual username named SH. So, chill out. Sean Hawkins says, why is Austin scared to debate me? Austin, like, I'll give you a chance to respond to this. Yeah. No, I'm not scared to debate anyone. I am on Discord, publicly available, like all the time. I debate Glovers like 10v1 regularly, whether they're PhDs, you name it. Uh, so I'm not scared to debate you. You'd have to come to where I am. Uh, if I every single person that got triggered, I take their ball away, hits me up frantically, begging me to debate them, I would never be able to get anything done. So uh, there's your answer. You keep asking and you ask about Polaris, which is a really stupid question. So if you want to debate me, come into Earth Awakenings on uh or Flat Earth Discord 2.0 on uh, Discord, and then you could debate me. Or I'm going to have a Flat Earth show here soon. If you can come on and behave and be cordial and respectful, then you can also come on there. You got it, Dan. Thank you very much for your question. This one coming in from Hates Stairs says, Iron Horse and Witsit, can you elaborate on your electrostatic gravitation hypothesis? It's odd to dismiss quantum mechanics, but also claim a force on that scale is responsible for Earth's gravity. Kind of weird, bro. I don't know that he claims that way. Yeah, so everything that is matter is intrinsically electrostatic. All molecular and intermolecular attractive forces are electrostatic. That simply means all matter is electrostatic. Uh, we know that it's 10 to the 36th to 39th power stronger than gravity even claims to be. And again, Walter Lewin from MIT will tell you everything observed on the Earth is electric and up to thousands of kilometers. And that due to the scalar nature of quote unquote gravity, it doesn't come into play until the planetary scale because electrostatics wouldn't be strong enough. So why would I, yeah, we have an agreed upon average of downward acceleration. Everything that accelerates down is intrinsically electrostatic. We have an electric gradient on the earth, which is equipotential increase of a hundred volts per meter, which means you have to have two Gaussian surfaces, which answers the dome question. There's obviously a surface above as is there is a surface of the earth. That's the only way you can get equipotential electric gradients. And so long story short, yeah, we have an electric gradient. We have a Gaussian surface. We have everything intrinsically electrostatic as much as the air, as well as the earth. Therefore, all downward acceleration is electrostatic acceleration objectively. You Can I say it. something on the electrostatic thing quickly? Sure. Um, so strong interactions aren't electrostatic, um, and that's because they're stronger than electromagnetism. When you look at a proton, it has three valence quarks. Two of those quarks have a plus two-thirds electric charge. One of them has a negative one-third electric charge. So why do the two plus two-thirds um, charges not repel each other? because strong interactions holding them together are stronger than electromagnetism. So, in fact, the structure of most matter in the universe is actually the result of strong interactions, not electromagnetism. You're referring to things like the Pauli exclusion principle, you know, electron orbitals, things like that, which is important. I mean, you're not wrong there. But when we're talking about the fundamental structure of matter, that's strong interactions, not electromagnetism. And just so you heard, Leo just admitted it's all electric. Yeah, elementary charge of two. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Third. You that's what I said. <laughs> electric charge, elementary charge is is electric. That's charge. Yeah, that's literally all matters held together with electrics. They have a misinterpretation of electrostatics. They call it the exchange of virtual photons in particle physics. So they don't even understand what electrostatics is. I'm using the word interchangeably <laughs> with word dielectric, but just objectively, just so you guys Those know, even neutrons and everything is electric within their own particle physics paradigm. They just don't know what they're talking about. This one from David Benz Cosby says, modern day debate, there are too many people speaking over each other. Two versus one is not as good as one versus one. I, I get it. But at the same time, folks, it's actually pretty darn controlled tonight. Sometimes I have to tell you, you know, it's not always going to be like if you want a boring debate channel, go check out Intelligence Squared. No offense, but I mean, sometimes their debates are boring <laughs> and sometimes their debates are good. I'll be honest. But if you really want like super controlled and your grandma's type of debate channel, you're, like that's not modern day debate. Oliver P. Perez says, can you explain the midnight sun in Norway in a flat earth model? Uh, yeah, the sun gets closer to the center. <laughs> The way, I see it, the way I see it is the sun is always going around the equator, but as it gets, as it spirals around every day. So from the spring equinox, well, it, it's always opposite on either side of the hemisphere. So, so from September 22nd till December 22nd, it's actually spiraling closer to the earth, which makes it appear to create a bigger circle above us. And then as it gets higher and higher towards June 22nd, that's when it appears to make a smaller circle 
And because of that appearance, it actually um, shines its light directly down towards the inner part of the, the Earth or the, the inner centre, the northern part, and they'll see it more through when the sun is actually furthest away from us. It's exactly like when you're looking through a tunnel or a tube, the, the nearer side is going to appear a lot bigger and the further side is going to be seem to be a lot smaller. But all you have to do is turn it around and you'll see that they're both exactly the same size. So it's all a perspective issue and it has real-world effects because the further away it is, then the smaller the circle it makes above us because our atmosphere is what causes the sunlight. It's not the sun itself, it's the actual atmosphere. I think I hope I explained that as well as I could. This is from Oliver B. Perez. Says, Can you explain the midnight... Did I just say this one? This is a... Just... David Ben Cosme says, What's it? Witty city. I don't know. Okay, with that. Mark says, Leo, why aren't you wearing a seatbelt? What does this mean? I have no idea. This one, bro. What? C. Parnas says, Austin always kills it. He needs better adversaries. Ooh, backhanded compliment. Malavia, thanks for your question, says, I challenge Witsit to a YouTube boxing match. Juicy. And most David George says, Witsit, I've seen Jupiter in my telescope. How? I don't think that we ever disputed that something called Jupiter is in the sky. So I would just say to the audience, you got to think about this honestly, right? If everything that you say to flat earthers is a straw man and it misrepresents our actual position, an intellectually honest person would kind of step back and be like, maybe I misunderstand the conversation. Maybe I haven't thoroughly seen what it is that they're saying yet. Uh, yeah, Jupiter's in the sky. No one disputes that. Planet, the Greek word for wandering star, that's not new. We know it's up there. I document them as well. Can I just ask a quick question? Sure. Yeah. Uh, is the Would the moon be in the dome? Would it be outside of the dome? You don't we don't have to make those claims i don't know i think that there's a super fluid oh my God. uh i think it looks like there's like something that acts like a super fluid and the moon could actually be magnetic holography projection as far as i'm concerned so i don't i don't know that's that's non sequitur to uh debunking the positive claims of the earth and that people walked on it so i'd also like to put in two cents and say that what we think of as the the firmament which some call the dome um it basically acts as a lens which is where the lights that we do see, uh, the sun and the stars, that's what causes them to appear as physical light to us and possibly even much lower atmosphere within the 12 to 14 mile range. And personally, I do think that the moon is a physical object inside or within a dome, you know, in our atmosphere, and that it actually uh, reflects or projects the solar energy that it gets into this lower um, what I call firmament B, um, the 12 to 14 mile, 12 to 14 mile high place where light sunlight exists. Um, I think it projects energy into that, and it creates a holographic projection of itself, and that's why we all see the same phase of the moon at the same time. That's my personal belief. I, I don't share it with other flat earthers, but that's how I see it. You got it. This one coming in from. Do appreciate your question, and Oliver Perez. I got the one from the sun in the Norway, the midnight sun, right in Norway. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. thanks. See, this one coming in from David George says, "Wait, it, <clears throat> Mr. Monster says, when a robot launches off, how come it doesn't hit the firmament every single time? How come sometimes the rocket keeps going into outer space? There is no dome. Yeah, you can't actually verify rockets go to outer space. I document them all the time. They have parabolic trajectories. Uh, doc, doc and even infrared as well. Like, yeah, rockets go in the air. There's no doubt, but they just go over the over the water in parabolic trajectories. They're like, why don't we ever have outside footage of seeing it continuously go in and out of the atmosphere from an outside perspective? Even if we did, it wouldn't prove it. But we don't even have that. So, long story short, uh, you can't use the begging the question of the globe, Earth, and the claims from NASA to then say, can you explain this as a flat earther? I mean, it's a very ignorant way to go about it, uh, but you can't verify that these things go to space. I don't believe space agencies. They clearly lie. You got it. Thank you very much for this question coming in from Udaf Heck You says, what does Iron Horse think about the Pauline pants down? What does that mean? <laughs> uh, I think that's a bit of a reference to an Australian politician called Pauline Hanson. And she's sort of a little bit controversial because she came out in the first place when she first started she was quite um 
considered racist simply because she spoke up against Asian people. And I think Pauline Pants Down is a comedian who makes fun of us. So I, I try to avoid politics as much as possible. I think it's all a bunch of nonsense. So nothing else to say. Thank you very much for your question, James W. Says after show on the Amy Newman channel, open mic as well. That's linked in the description, folks. You can find it right now. And all of our guests are linked down there as well, whether or not they have an after show. So highly encourage you to check out their links, including Amy's after show. This one from Mark Reed says, Witsit, why did you not address the dome? Why did you dodge the question? Could you answer it, please? Yeah, yeah, I did just a second ago. We have an electric gradient on the Earth, equipotential increase of 100 to 120 volts per meter. And the only way that this can be replicated on the Earth or demonstrated is to have two Gaussian surfaces. And that creates a mediation of pressure that gives you an equal distribution. And that's what we have on the Earth, showing us that there is something there. Of course, also the second law of thermodynamics seems to necessitate that the uh, necessary antecedent to gas pressure is physical containment. So something must be containing the uh, Atmos and the electric gradient works perfectly uh, as if there is a Gaussian surface above us. You got it, Ann. Thank you very much for your question coming in from Mr. We got this. Bitter Truth says, if, if Earth is flat, then sun should disappear <clears throat> at some point. There will be no sunrise and water will fall due to edge of Earth limit, even travel flat. Your claim is because your holy book says that Earth is flat. Uh I think that he covered that earlier, but we, I mean, I heard you can go. I, I'll say, I don't think that the earth is flat because any book or any religion says so. That's ridiculous and ignorant. I don't like religion. I think it's stupid. I think when people cop out there thinking to religion, then uh, they're, they're brainwashed people, kind of like the heliocentric model. But I think Iron Horse has an answer. Yeah, yeah, basically what you said. They're trying to confuse the two models. They're trying to put the flat earth into a heliocentric model, whereas that's not the way it works whatsoever. The flat earth is what we know is fixed at the bottom of the known universe. And what we see moving around above us is what we see moving around above us. We don't assume there's an edge. Only people who have been indoctrinated into the globe or false models even think about an edge. You know, an edge is not even part of our equation. This one from Joshua Kelly. Leo says, Leo, pompous attitudes and ignoring the rebuttals are not a good way of showing intelligence in your argument. Well, uh, and the point of an argument isn't to show intelligence to begin with. So I don't I don't know if they understand what the point of an argument is. Number two, I don't I don't think I did that. So it, it doesn't matter. And if I may just really quickly to comment, you know, what? never mind. I forgot the point. I can't. Uh. You got it. This one from do appreciate it. Robert Summers says it's hilarious how much the flat earth folks hide behind not having a model. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Some of these are a little bit punchy. I have a flat earth model. Or uh, they say, hold on one second. Or, no, they, so they can say, quote, we don't claim that. Tell me one positive claim and it's evidence, Austin or iron. Here's a dielectric plane within an inertial plane because we have a magnetic field, so it has to be within an inertial plane. It's the only way that it could exist. There's a dielectric elect or electrostatic plane, topographical plane that's stationary. These are all positive claims that all empirical evidence supports. And I do have a flat Earth model. Her name is Kai. It's my wife. You got it. This one from. Uh, can I also, before you do that, I just want to make a quick comment. I don't know how you could get a finite flat earth without an edge it would have to be infinite for there not to be an edge container could touch down amy we talked about this last time and it's the fact the is edge. That everybody that wants to talk about a model all the time is the fact is you can't have a model of reality reality works at full scale so everything that we see works at full scale it doesn't work what? on a smaller scale so to try and think of earth in a model, models it's you have to actually go outside and look at things to see happening at real full scale to understand how it works. You cannot model it down, unlike the heliocentric model, which is great for people with very small minds who need to see things in tiny models. Oh, you got to me and Rob do appreciate it. Thunderstorm. Both are wrong according to their own research. Since mountains are not flat, and the earth without water doesn't look like a sphere. Topographical plane has been said a solid 20 times, right? The, well, the earth without water does look like a sphere, and it's spheroidal. 
which is the word that specifically I, I, I used. So this um, it's just slightly at the bottom, right? <laughs> this <one> what? From, <laughs> this one from spheroidal as in iron horse's bicep. That's what we mean by that. This one coming in from the Levoy <laughs> says, how has the dome never gotten dirty or worn out? Why has condensation never collected on it? Why is it pristine? How do you know what has or hasn't collected on it or what condition it's in when you can't go there? It's illegal to privately explore past the 60th south latitude. It's illegal to even try to shoot rockets up that high of an altitude. You have to get a permission from the government to get a certain type of fuel. It's a ridiculous question. Maybe go ask the government while they have declassified documents that say that they had an approximation method to determine the brightness of the firmament container on the earth and that their approximation method was proven accurate. Maybe that would be a good question. Not to mention that there are also observable laws of density and buoyancy and things like dirt and smoke and whatnot cannot reach above a certain height. So it automatically, it's just self-cleaning. It doesn't even have anything to clean from. It just doesn't, nothing reaches it. Can I make a point to that? Because it was the point that I wanted to make earlier. Or do we need to move on? I'm open if you want to make a quick point. So it, no, notice how when the flat earthers are pressed to actually give the details of the model, things that sort of just like follow from from what they're saying, they always talk about, oh, well, we can't show that uh, we're, we're, we're not allowed to go there. There's always an excuse when it comes time. You know, when, when the chickens come home to roost, they come home empty when you when you're talking with flat earthers. No, look at hum. This guy's crushing. Well, I also ad just want to I didn't point. I didn't add hum. I don't think you know what that means. We've yeah, your arguments are always just like vague bubble. dismissal insults. No, that's not what it is. Anyway, if you have to know the yeah, fish bubble, then you know nothing about the history of what we've detected about the firmament in the first place. Yeah, but it I is just, interesting. I just decided the government. But you just said you government. couldn't detect it. The government when Amy says asked that they you. have an approximation method to determine the brightness of the firmament, and the approximation method was proven accurate. This one coming in from. Do appreciate your question. David George says, Witsit word salad, so delicious, so sad. Po. I forgot, what does Po mean again? When you're so a Po is that they are so close to a line, it's almost unavoidable. Are they a troll or do they actually believe it? It's hard to tell that is a Po. Austin. But I love all of our interlocutors here. <laughs> We'll give we'll give Austin a chance. Austin, are you a po? This person's a they're insulting your honor. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I know for a fact that what they told us the Earth is is one hundred percent not true, and that's why I don't make definitive claims about the Earth in entirety because that would be dishonest. And in addition, word salad is when something literally doesn't coherently make sense in the order that it was presented, like blue chicken wall egg yesterday. Why? That's not what I did. Okay, I I made very coherent concise points that isn't word salad maybe look up the words if you don't know them. but the truth is yes i do think what i say i would never be able to live with myself to go around promoting lies Can i just Mr. make one point about the uh, last question with the dome it is interesting that not only are there smudges but you would think there'd be cracks or some sort of integrity problems either it is self-maintaining or someone is maintaining it just well, wow. ice and the rep re replace itself, you know, because the, if the temperatures are that cold, then the gases that are up there um, composing the actual thing, then they're completely just freezing straight back into place the minute we hit them with a nuclear bomb, assuming nuclear bombs even exist. So whatever sort of right. firepower we're sending at them, it is self-repairing. And in fact, if you also look into operations, um, high jump and deep freeze, well, uh, even Admiral Byrd admitted that... Uh, the second one, whatever, I can't remember the exact order they come in, but the second mission was a reconnaissance mission. And the reconnaissance mission was to try and retrieve a machine that was used to drill through the so-called wall, which had self-repaired and was growing back around it, and they couldn't get the machine back. And that's after they retreated. And there may have been a lot of other events that they haven't disclosed at this stage, but basically that's the reason why we have the Antarctic Treaty is because we cannot penetrate this so-called wall. It self-repairs. This one comes <gasps> from Mr. Monster. It says, ocean currents prove that Earth is rotating via the Coriolis effect. Do you disagree? Well, what proves it? He said, ocean currents prove that Earth is rotating via the Coriolis <laughs> effect. 
it doesn't roll rotate via anything. Okay, and the Coriolis effect is the idea of the inertial and accelerative frames of reference giving you a different perceivable uh, differentiation. Yeah, inertial accelerative. He just shakes his head no all the time. It's so frustrating. He's just always objectively wrong, but shaking his head no. I don't understand. But anyway, inertial and accelerative always frames. Always concerned with Coriolis. the meta, aren't you? Maybe. You, yeah, you're so smart, guy. So inertial <laughs> and accelerative frames. But I explained how actually north to south debunks that because they then claim the atmosphere moves in lockstep with the Earth. And then I also have a letter from Einstein. Right, which very clearly says that due to the Machian principle, as he wrote in 1913, Ernst Mach, if the Earth was stationary but the sky was moving around it, you would get a translation of motion to the interior of the system and you would get Coriolis and centrifugal effects. And that's Einstein applying relativity himself, explaining that principle has to be true to invoke the Arthur Eddington experiment. So these are just things that people don't understand. I, I don't dispute that there's some type of effect because there's an ether vortex drift over top of the Earth as far as I'm concerned, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't prove the Earth is spinning and uh, even Einstein would tell you that. This one from Bitter Truth says, in order to prove Earth is flat, you must know cosmology, wits it, what is universe expanding equation, and why gravity is so weird. Yeah, so like the Friedman equations, the idea that the universe is expanding in all directions, that's that's the problem, is because we looked and saw even distribution away from the Earth at the center point, and so then we only had two options. One is that the Earth is the center point, or two is that it's going to look like you're at the center no matter where you are. That was the quote I invoked with Stephen Hawking. That's what he's clearly explaining earlier was, well, either the Earth is in the center um, or it's actually expanding in all directions, and we determined that we believe the latter on grounds of modesty, meaning it's a philosophical Copernican principle that you would have to think that you're in a special, unique position to think the Earth's in the center. So we disregard it. So, I mean, it's pretty simple. Yeah, the, the universe expands in all directions, allegedly, and even distribution relative to your perceivable location in whatever part of the universe it is, which is a ad hoc explanation to explain what we saw. And we've now debunked it. And now you're off by 10 to the 120th power with your expansion assumption. This one it's from not ad hoc. David George. We got that one. Bitter Truth says, where did all the antimatter go? What is quantum physics? Explain me string theory. How black holes form and why there's high gravity in the center of a black hole. They don't ask they don't say who these questions are for. I presume it's for Austin based on their last question. Well, I mean, I can explain those things. Th these, I don't these think are the Austin Glover. could. These are global questions. Leo, stop self-projecting, dude. I would debate you one be one. I don't know what that means. So it's impossible. I don't know what that means. It's impossible. All you do is like you're coming across like really kind of condescending. And here you are concerned about the meta. So to, right. to answer on, the question just, that was asked. There's, just to hear what Austin was saying there. Uh, well, I think he was accusing you of interrupting, and then you interrupted him while he was accusing you. So, but we'll, we'll come right back to you, Leo. Go ahead, Austin. I'll give you another 10 seconds, and then we'll come back to Leo. Yeah, all those different things are things that I fight against, the idea of all the uh, reification fallacies within quantum and cosmological current studies. So I don't, I don't feel a need to answer. I think he was maybe asking the Globers, but uh, I'm just saying like condensating remarks void of substance of specificity doesn't actually mean anything in the real world. Taking it to Leo. Go ahead, Leo. Yeah, so um, from somebody who actually understands the field of cosmology, at le least better than, than what it does, um, quantum, what, I don't know what they mean when they say explain quantum mechanics. Uh, string theory, the only thing you need to know about it is it's wrong. Um, where did the dark matter go? I don't understand that question. It didn't go anywhere. Um, why are why is black, why is gravity high in a black hole? Because they're an extremely uh, large amount of mass and an extremely small location relative to the amount of mass, which naturally, because of Einstein's field equations, results in extreme curvature in space time. This has been very 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 precisely measured. It's well understood, and it explains numerous features of the reality that we observe. You got it. Thank you very much for this question coming in from Samir Farsain says the moon is a globe. No, a globe orbiting a pizza. This one coming in from <laughs> David George says, what? "This I don't know." This one from Him Sake says for Austin, great job. Can you tell everyone about the impossible lunar eclipse coming up? Thank you. Yeah, in early November, a selenillion eclipse is supposed to occur and be um, observable from the east coast. The selenillion eclipse is where the sun and the moon both appear in the sky during the lunar eclipse, which is a geometric impossibility according to the globe Earth model. The Earth blocks the light from the sun and casts a shadow onto the moon. Of course, they claim that it's just an illusion and it refracts both the sun and the moon up, even though it's actually beneath the horizon. And we see the sun, but it's not really there. But yeah, the selenillion eclipse, which debunks the globe Earth model, is also known as the impossible eclipse, and it happens in early November on the East Coast. You Can I just ask about if either of you, because we are driven 
to black hole cosmology because of gravity. And so my question would then be, do you guys believe in black holes? Uh, no, that's just an idea. And actually relativity can't even be applied to singularity. So it actually can't mathematically even compute black holes. Yeah, it helped, helped us yes, come up can. with the prediction of black holes, but it can't be applied to a singularity. So no, I don't believe in fairy tale mathematical uh, constructs. This one coming in from, do appreciate your question. Dave Hinkle says, for the Globers, please provide a valid direct measurement of Earth curvature, repeatable and verifiable. Hydrostatic equilibrium as a result of its gravitation meeting the resistance of the material that which the Earth is made of, which is the reason stars and planets are spherical. You got it. Thank you very much for this question coming in from Gordzilla37. If empty hubris proved the globe, let's see, looking for more than just an insult, this one from Hillside says, Leo. <laughs> okay. Guys, no, I actually want you to read it. I'm sorry. Please, they please, say, James, Leo, please read it. You're behaving like a child who has had his ball taken away. Relax. They lied. I, I can act that way if they really want me to. Who is it that they mean lie? Do they mean that the people who told you that the globe is yeah, the yeah. globe? Is who, who knows? They, they didn't lie they mean. just because we okay. can look at the data. It's independent of the person. David, it's all presupposition that begs the question, bro. Well, here, to, be, to make it fair, David George says, James, wits it lies. Why? Explain. So you've got plenty of uh, uh, people on both sides. People get fired. You know, I've told people. I don't understand it myself. But this is one of the most fiery, contentious topics. Like, no joke. We host abortion. We host everything. And this Flat Earth versus Globe is probably the most aggressive topic there is. Samir Farzine says, Flat Earth, what's the next stop flying east from the U.S.? England, Greece, India, China, Japan. Then what? If USA, again, it's a globe. If not, what and why? East to West circumnavigation is 100% possible on a flat earth. It isn't complicated, bro. So please stop saying that. It just makes you look ridiculous. Just dr have, draw a circle, draw a point in the middle, and then put a compass there. You're going to update relative to north and come back to where you started. The only thing impossible on a flat earth would be north to south circumnavigation, which has never been actually done. You got it. And this one, thank you very much for your question. Dave Hinkle, did I do this one? For the Globers, please provide a valid direct measurement of Earth's, Earth's curvature, repeatable and verifiable. Also, I think Leo did give an answer for that. I just want to ask if they would be able to do the shadow test that we've been doing for th thousands of years, if we could get some sort of... Uh, empirical data. In fact, if it was a flat disk, it should be that many of the same uh, lights ahead would be directly over at all the same time, but they're not. That's why we have time zones. They have radically different hours, depending on where you are on the globe. A gross That's misunderstanding exactly. of everything. Sorry, uh, it's a, send in love right back you to it. you too. You got extremely it. Extremely erroneous thinking. It's, you know, it's, if we consider that the sun is actually local as we describe it to be, then that's exactly how it works. It works as the hour hand above the clock face of the earth, which is similar to a 24 hour clock face. And so, of course, that's exactly how it works. The stars move about four minutes per day faster. So that's why we all see the same stars at different parts of the southern hemisphere at night time because we have local time zones and we only see the stars at night they're actually going slightly faster than the sun so everything works exactly as you'd expect it once you understand how things should appear above the stationary plane of earth you got it thank you very much for your question i just put a poll in the live chat this is a juicy one we've never done this before in particular it has four categories i'm flat earth and i my side either won or lost and i'm globe and my side either won or lost and when I say won or lost, obviously, what we really just mean is who is more persuasive. So sometimes people are like, oh, there's no such thing as winning. Uh, but anyway, Mr. Monster says, does every flat earth, does every flat earther believe, believer think that 
Images from the James Webb Telescope are CGI. And why reference Hubble instead of modern day scientists? Uh, because the actual like um, postulations that Hubble made are still the foundational glue of what we think to this day. That's why. And I'm explaining that even he will admit to you that if we're wrong about redshift, the Earth could be geocentric in a much more dense environment where the lights are much more local and it could be much younger. And now James Webb, ironically, is saying that redshift's wrong. I tried to explain that. I was trying to cram it in within two minutes. But uh, and so, no, I don't think that the images are entirely fake. You can take a picture of the sky, but they are, of course, layered with the RGB filters, red, green, blue, red, green, blue filters. And then they are, uh, yeah, enhanced via computer imagery. And it, this is just well known. So uh, that's that's the problem. The interpretation is the problem. And then your presupposition of redshift is also a problem, which is why Hubble was brought up, because he's basically the father head of your position. And he explains it's just a philosophy. No. And we observe it. It's not a presupposition. They readily admit no, that don't. all the images yes, we do. Uh, are artistic impressions taken from radio waves anyway. So they're not even seeing what they're seeing. Yeah, background it's, radiation. Yeah, radio waves. I just got to point out that when he says we see it, just so the audience knows, we objectively don't. What we see is that yes, there's even do. distribution with the Earth at the center. And they say, oh, well, it would look like it was the center no matter where you were in the universe. So we that's, actually that's see actually, the opposite of what they claim objectively. That's actually not, just for the sake of the audience, that's not at all what we observe. What we observe is not only um, galactic redshift, but we can actually factor out the um, redshift as a result of the gravitational radiation because the light is traveling over such a long distance. That's known, oh my God, what is it? The something sacks, something, something sacks, something like that. I can't remember right off the top of my head, but th yeah, that's how well measured it is, is that we can separate the um, redshift as a result of gravitational lensing buddy. from the redshift that is the result of the expansion. I said of your interpretation of... for over 100 years. It doesn't rely on mm -hmm. uh, interpretations. We literally look out and see this. You can deny it. That's fine. You're wrong. You can be wrong and you can be happy in you're wrong. Why are you so emotional about your religion? I'm not emotional. Okay. I'm just showing that you're wrong. You don't know All what right, you're we talking get it. We about. Get it. You religious. don't understand anything we get about it. cosmology. Cosmology isn't a religion. And you should probably not talk about things you have no understanding of. Self-projection. Gotcha. And this one coming in from, do appreciate your question. Nominal says, Leo, considering the majority of the universe is claimed to consist of dark matter slash energy, what proof do we have of its existence and why is it important to gravitational theory? Uh, because we measure dark matter through its gravitational effects in, in, rota in the, the rotations of galaxies. Uh, galaxies rotate so quickly that if it was just the baryonic matter, which is sort of the matter that we can see holding them together, that it couldn't hold them together. They're rotating too quickly, but they don't fling apart. Why? And why is it also that uh, they lens light more than they should? They, um, and they, that we can, that there's more mass there than there should be. Well, there's obviously something they're contributing to the mass. Most cosmologists think there's some particle we can't observe that is that because it doesn't interact with the electromagnetic radiation there. Some think we have to make modifications to gravity. But nobody in cosmology denies that the anomaly is there. And with respect to dark energy, that's just the fact that the universe expands exponentially quicker over larger scales than it does on, on, on shorter scales. And some energy is going to have to contribute to that. Uh, and that's what dark energy is so th these are directly implicated by the observations we make the fact that we don't fully understand exactly what they are doesn't doesn't remove the fact that the anomalies are there and we know that they are there mathematical discrepancies because relativity is wrong but anyway we'll move on. This one well, from they're not mathematical discrepancies alone but go MD, off about things you don't understand MD, if you had a question i did not see it in the live chat so just at me at modern day debate and i i saw a super chat but not that question in particular this one coming in from Gleep glorp says where do the boats that disappear beyond the horizon go after they disappear <laughs> They don't always disappear at the same location, like a physical, tangible Earth curvature. This is just objective. The same. See, this is what's funny. They say that we can see the curvature of the Earth from um, the surface. Then we say, look, the horizon's 10 times too far. They say, oh, you never see the actual curvature of the Earth. It's just the apparent location because of refraction. You can never see it. Then they turn around and say, again, that's blocking that boat. When we zoom in, we can see the boat again. It changes based on uh, angular resolution limit, perspective, and then the conditions of the most dense layer of the air, which is what you're looking through. And then you eventually reach where you can no longer see any further. Further. So it's not even, 
it's not even complicated. I don't understand why it's why it's so misunderstood. I mean, this is why my boy Eli super chatted to talk about this to the the uh, ISS, and they just skated past it. How they they explained that the ISS would only see three percent of the Earth from that height, and you wouldn't see the curvature. That's supposedly he said five to eight thousand miles. They claim the ISS is two hundred fifty five miles, and they claim you cannot see the curvature. And then Amy's showing us citations of twenty thousand feet. You see the curvature. Now you're claiming we can see it on the ground. And and the ironic part is they'll say left to right instead of straight on. Blah blah blah. You can't see the curvature according to the math. And you guys just go around saying that you can. It's just kind of weird. So can I uh, just yeah, make a point it. about that? I would want to know, do you have any papers that are actually saying that there is no curvature? Uh, again, it's not saying no curvature. Paul Larson, the planetarium director of the world's biggest planetariums, explains that you could never see the curvature of the Earth from the ISS at 255 miles. Shows the Except math you because can. you only see 3% of the Earth. And you just claim that you can see it at 20,000 feet in a plane. So See, but don't you th- – I asked for a paper and you're like – this one scientist who Leo and I probably think you're quote mining. Like that's why we ask for papers because it removes human bias. It removes just our feelings or opinions about it. No, no. Peer review with tons of bias baked in doesn't remove human bias. Peer review removes bias. So I don't that's know. What you're point, yes. bias, really? So I can go yeah. propose a theory explaining that the etheric framework that would absorb quantum. No, fluid because it's not rooted in any, right, any this empirical is why you data. Never debate me. As I would destroy. No, you it's yeah. I, no, no, it's because you don't understand the subject. Self-projecting <laughs> intellectual look like a fool, like you do now. From. Says you, the guy with veins popping out of his neck. Can, can I just put in three things, please? This one can is. Uh, no. Go. We'll give you a short and pithy one, Iron Horse. Thank you, mate. I've I've made a video about perspective, and it's pretty straightforward. It said everything beneath you converges upwards towards eye level, and everything above you converges downwards to eye level, and that's why we have a convergence point that we call the horizon, and we can't see through the horizon because everything beneath us isn't see through. So it's it's a pretty straightforward thing, but anything that gets further away than that point of convergence at your eye level, which is due to your viewing height, it's just not going to be seen. So it's not as though it's actually going below it or it's not disappearing anywhere. It's just been hidden by things nearer to you, which visually appear bigger. Thank you, James. This one coming in from move, Must Move Fast. Nominal says the invisible matter that we can't detect is called, quote unquote, dark matter from NASA. Uh, well, I don't know what NASA has to do with this. This was this was observed like in, independent of them, like that there are Tell it like every telescope can 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 measure this. Like this isn't. I, I'm just. I don't understand why they rely so heavily on NASA as if like NASA is the only the only institution that talks about this. Like it's just it just demonstrates how little they actually understand of the subject. That's all it does. Objectively, we don't know what dark matter is. It's a mathematical discrepancy based on the relativistic I didn't, application. Uh, yeah, but I, the I affirmed No that. one knows what it is. They say oh, we it know it's there. The electromagnetic we spectrum with radiation, so they can't prove it. Yeah. They don't know what it is, and they're not you're, sure exactly right. what to do other than the You're right, and things. we know it's there. What's your point? The discrepancy Only based on your presupposition and begging the question no. of relativity in the heliocentric model. Itself. No. We're actually observe driven. It. So, yeah. so you didn't how observe you, dark matter. They say it doesn't react with the electromagnetic spectrum. I never said that we did. Can you tell me why galaxies are held together despite um, orbiting at rates that should fling them apart. Yeah, we have a much more uh, dense medium. Yeah, so what? what is that? What is that? So what it is seems that like a super fluid medium. You claim it's a vacuum, you're wrong. Super fluid. I don't thanks even for, think you know what a super fluid is. Leo. Can you tell you'll me what a super fluid is? I don't think you can tell me what a super fluid is. You'll get there. You'll get there. It has electrolytes. What plants crave. I'm sorry. You don't know what dark matter is, and you just claim that you can see it. No, I never said no. I never said that. See, I can't do this, James. All you can do is straw man everything that I see. Yes, because all you do is say things that aren't the things that the person said. All right, seriously, I don't understand. When you hear my voice, that's a great time. I'm the I'm the one that's like, it's my role to bring order. So if you hear my voice, I don't understand why you wouldn't defer to me. Instead, you want to keep talking over me. So this uh, will give you a chance to respond. Wits it really short and pithy because we do we've got to we spent a lot of time on this question. So short and pithy, and then we've got to go to the next one. Oh, yeah. Well, by definition, it doesn't uh, react with the electromagnetic radiation or electromagnetic spectrum, which means you could never see it. Saying you see it is nothing like that. We see that the galaxies allegedly move too, too, too fast if we assume relativity in the heliocentric model. Yes, there's a mathematical discrepancy. Relativity has been debunked. This one coming in from, did did Iron Horse really expose himself during this debate? Someone in live chat said, the, this one coming in from Brandy Beckett says, Flat Earth believers, what evidence would convince you that we actually live on an upside down pyramid Earth? 
Dun dun dun. What? What? That, that was for us. Yeah, we have the opinion that we try not to uh, believe in ridiculous, impossible things. That's why we understand the Earth is flat. That's how we observe water to behave. We understand that water must be contained by higher edges on all sides, not just somewhere out of sight, out of mind. So whenever somebody presents a ridiculous proposition, we just think, okay, yep, next. Can I just comment that the reason that water is contained is because of gravity? Nice, nice reification fallacy. What is being reified? The idea of gravity, a conceptual abstraction that attributes physical properties to space and time that we can measure objectively and have for hundreds for over a hundred years. You cannot measure space and time bending. Yes, we can. Right. We have. No, can. Yes, oh, we can. One, what, do you know what a Lorentz, but do you know what? No, just one question. Do you know what a Lorentz boost is? I don't. I know. I what didn't Lorentz think so. I, know what a I didn't think so. Is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> By the way, I want to say this. So they claim that they measured a gravitational wave displacement in LIGO. This is one of the measurements they have and for Virgo. gravity. And, and it's the, the idea, it's the and idea the that they one. measure the displacement of a string one ten thousandth, one ten thousandth the width of a proton. Yeah. Wow. Gravity proven. You don't no, have proof for it. It's a concept. Well, I don't know what you mean by bunk. string. It doesn't use strings. It uses lasers. And yes, we can measure, we can measure the sensitivity and the displacement of those lasers on those scales. That That's what like supercomputers do. Well, how sure do you think we bunk. like observed the Higgs boson? How do you think we've done the deep inelastic scattering to know what protons and neutrons are made of? Yeah. You just know fuck all about physics. You it's probably triggered. couldn't tell me what a tensor is. Relativity has been debunked on the quantum and cosmological scale. This is just objective. You're literally just a parrot in a cage at this point. Just... And that is also not true. The quantum mechanics and general relativity are facts. The theory of everything, <laughs> which is a PR term, is us trying to figure out how to tie both of these facts together. You are wrong. wrong. You'll get there. The sinister that's what porpoise. that's the opinion of physicists but the sinister, i just read Pittsburgh university saying that they're incompatible so we can move on the sinister porpoise says has iron horse solved the p versus not non p problem does he of, mean the q some sort of is he talking about if p not q sort of thing i don't know what's he talking about this one coming the p top. versus np i'm sorry James W. says, after show on Amy Newman's channel, defend your flat earth sky daddy, as they say. Okay, Ooh. open mic. James still getting a lot of feedback, buddy. I see it bounce off your mic. That's true. And But yes, all of our guests, Austin and Leo and Iron Horse and Amy are linked in the description. And after show on Amy's channel, this one coming in from Samir says, flat earth, you have a model on formation of rock pizza. Uh I don't know. No one claims a pizza. That's called a straw man fallacy. Elijah Freeman says, Leo said we can see the globe from the International Space Station. Paul Larson says that's mathematically impossible. Respond to previous super chat given the clarification, Leo. Well, nothing was clarified. You just said, well, some guy disagrees. Okay, I don't care. Show me the math then. You okay, can't we'll be sure it. and message um, you the math. Please. And you, you can see it because people on the International Space Station have said, yeah, you, you can you can see it. Um, I, I don't think I said that you can see the globe. If I did, um, then you're just nitpicking at words. Obviously, what I meant is that we can see curvature on, on the Earth from the International Space Station. Also, I just wanted to clarify, when I said the International Space Station was like 8,000 or 10,000 something odd miles, I, I completely missed, I was trying to talk about the GPS satellites, not the International Space Station. That's like, what, 245, 250 miles above the, um, and then I, yeah. and then, yeah, and then I looked it up and the GPS satellites are 14,500 above. Well, um, so I, I just, I just misspoke. Well, naturally I, everything does. I just want to say, I just, just want to say, I just want to say this real fast. So um, actually with the whole curvature from space, you can do the math yourself, okay? And there's a video. I uh, I'll tr it's on my channel when I debunk the uh, the astronaut in OTS. But there's a video where you can hear Don Pettit, an astronaut on the ISS, talking to another astronaut about how once they use the fisheye lens, it drastically changes it. And the other guy says, wow, I'm going to have to start learning how to use this. I love the fisheye lens. Literally sitting there talking about something that imposes curvature onto it. They maintains a certain ankle so if you're looking down you'd have a downward con convexity imposed onto a flat earth it's not even slightly complicated to explain even if there were people up there and that distance is not accurate 
This one coming in from Brandy Beckett says, How thick is our flat earth? Iron Horse says, Thicker than a bowl full of oatmeal. We'll give you a chance to respond. Yeah, I don't believe that the earth has a thickness. I believe it's potentially um, limitless. But to the best of our knowledge, as we, as Wits had already mentioned earlier, we can uh, dig down to as deep as about 7.8 miles, which isn't very far, really. It's not even, you know, they say the thickness of the crust is about 14 miles. So to believe that Earth even has a thickness, I think it's, it's basically an irrelevant question. All that we do know is that the Earth, you know, we only need the top few inches of soil to grow our food, and it floats above or sits upon some great depths which are really not necessary to know yeah we've never gone deeper than eight <laughs> eight miles so why would we make a claim beyond that only the globe earth does that um geology uh, constantly changes yeah. you're right it's called tectonic activity thank you for uh affirming uh, no, the model <laughs> keeps changing when we dug you eight are, miles you are such a clown earth, this is the just... entire globe earth prediction the whole way down 7.8 miles was inaccurate with temperatures the amount of moisture the amount of density the actual elemental composition it was wrong the entire way down 7.8 miles you just don't know what you're talking about this one coming in from radio wave, something that's calibrated to work. Sorry, James. Sorry, something that's calibrated to work in the medium of air. And so as, as soon as you put it through a different medium, whether it be the ground or through a vacuum or whatever you believe it to be, then that that calibration of the, the thing they're using, how many waves per second it's propagating, is going to differ and it will give you completely a false reading. This one coming Can in else, from... Well, I just want to know, do you guys think there was a time when the government agencies didn't have control when people could just freely go to the dome and see it and come back and oh i'm sure you really. could do that just point. sorry go ahead a huge amount of um you know technology like even building ships you know most ships weren't designed to go much more from one island to another or one continent to another to actually travel beyond antarctica like once you hit that ice you need an icebreaker to even get to the ice wall, which is even they just the those. edge of Antarctica. And then you've got nothing. You've got no fuel. You've got no supplies, no food, no nothing. So I, don't, I really don't think that it really mattered to people of the past. And really to us now, I think the only way we could do it was, is with airships, something that can float above it all. And who knows? We might even hit an actual wall and not be able to go any further. So... Yeah, I don't see that as um, particularly relevant to what people of the past are capable of doing. Uh, can, can I ask, do you want to move on, James? If it's really short and pithy, I can give you a chance. No, no it's fine because it was a question. So you just go ahead and continue. I'm sorry. This one going to be on from. Do appreciate your question. Samir says, are there people living on the bottom side of the flat earth? No such Again. Thing. No one makes claims like that. It's so weird that you guys ask questions like that. He just explained to you that it seems it's like an irrelevant question. And the deepest you can go is 7.8 miles. That's the deepest ever dug. So no, why why ask us the question when the truth is you're the side making claims beyond what can be verified? We're not doing that. That's our whole point. We want to empirically they, verify this. They still think they're in outer space. That's why they think that way. Yeah. This one coming in from Do Appreciate Your Question. You guessed it. Brandy Beckett strikes again. If we have no way to know how thick our your flat earth is, then how do we know our earth is not actually an upside-down pyramid shape? Well, we don't have empirical evidence for that, so we would have to be able to get to the area where you could measure some drastic steep drop-off or anything like that to be viable. And also physics alone doesn't allow that. So we again, it's based on what can be empirically demonstrated. The Earth is provably and measurably a topographical plane. When they ask the globe earthers, which we always do for direct physical measurement of curvature, he then says, oh, well, I think that's how hydrostatics would form around the Earth and it become a ball. Because there are no direct physical measurements of earth curvature and they're only showing a topographical plane that's all we are addressing is what we know and what it does is falsify what they told us the earth was that's the whole point you got showed, it, showed it thank you very much for this question coming in from coffee mom iron horse why is it day for you and night for us on a flat earth model 
Well, I did actually explain that a little bit earlier. Is is I basically said that the sun is small and local, and it acts basically as the hour hand of what we would think of as a 24-hour clock, basically going around the equator, getting higher and lower to give us the seasons. And so wherever it's directly overhead, which now it's actually 1 p.m. here at Australian time, two minutes away from, um, so, so I'm in the middle of the day. So therefore, whoever's diagonally opposite, if I pointed straight north and went the same distance through the North Pole to the other side, well, that would be virtually there 1 a.m. in the morning. That's exactly how it works. It's exactly how you'd expect it to work. The, the Earth is divided into 24 slices of pizza, if you want to use that terminology, and that's our time zones. It makes absolute common sense. And in fact, what doesn't work is if we were on the globe and we were going around the sun, and we use a clock to measure ourselves spinning once every exactly 24 hours, then every time we moved a degree around the sun, which is nearly a day, then our clocks would actually be out by about four minutes. So that every six months, we'd actually be having midday at midnight, according to the clock. So the clock is a flat earth proof because it exactly measures 24 hours every single day. You got it. Thank you very much for your question. Coming in from Sky Scion says, I think Amy's obsession with religion shows that Amy is the one in a religion, but she doesn't even know it. L-O-L. I always appreciate when anyone uses the word religion in a negative manner. So I just want to thank the questioner. We should keep on doing that. But no, I've been actually doing, trying to do the opposite. I really, I want to go as big tent as possible. Theist, especially the ones that are for scientific consensus, what I, which I think are actually the majority are on Leo and I's side. And so it would actually be easy and simple for me to just make this an atheist versus theist debate. But no, I think this is an epistemological debate. This is about do you accept scientific consensus or is it about personal experience? This one He's from saying heliocentrism is a religion. I John <laughs> Rapp says, Leo and Amy, please explain why Flat Earth is foolish. Derp. I don't know if that's like a sarc, if they're calling you a derp or if I don't know. Go ahead. Well, well, it's because it's obviously it's wrong, and that's all reason, I have to say. Your, your strongest reason from Very each profound. person. And I just it's obviously also, wrong. Profound. If it's obvious, then you should be able to demonstrate how it's obvious. I can. I have. So yeah. Amy. Well, I just want to say, you know, cons it it is easy to just say that someone is stupid or something like that and to dismiss i think that skeptics we deal with a lot of um in our opinion superstitious and pseudoscientific beliefs but i think it is actually worth the time and energy to go through the research to figure out why they view the way they are we will consistently say you do not lose or gain intelligence by being a theist and uh, as an atheist to a theist so i would have to say you do not lose or gain iq points by being a flat earther i hope that leo and i are just trying to appeal to good science to the for the empirical well, uh, then, all you got to do is, then, is prove that it's wrong you know like if we can prove that the we globe have is wrong, we have we prove the globe is wrong by proving there's no motion no no motion there's no curvature that everything can be explained by perspective and diminution of things getting smaller in the distance. That so all works exactly according to everything we'd expect to see so on a stationary planet of Earth. So if you are going to prove the stationary planet of Earth were wrong, you can't just say we have, we've got thousands of proofs. That's what you'd all say. But you've got nothing. You've never done it. But all, I all have worse... is trying to, to defend a belief that we have proven wrong. I just want to say one final thing. I don't think that either of our two interlocutors here, Amy, could actually like outline at least two of the points that we've made tonight. So I, I don't think they're really in a position to say, you haven't proven this. Okay, whatever. That's they're fine. like five. They're like the first points we heard when we first looked into Flat Earth. You're not even past the surface level misrepresentations. And you guys oftentimes use begging the question fallacies. And then you assert your presupposition 
as if it actually proves what's in contention. It's such a rudimentary fallacy fallacy. that it just shows Dunning-Kruger is clearly present. But how are we using a begging the question fallacy? In every scenario, like with Eric, what questions being begged? I asked for an example. He said just everything. I started yeah. to give it, but both you guys interrupted because that's what you guys do. You have to fundy mute the other yeah, side. Yeah, because you don't said, answer questions. You also I was did literally say, answering it. You I was did say everything, but the floor is all yours. Sure. Yeah, so the begging the question would be, for example, taking, I'm talking about Aristophanes who presupposed a distant sun, an infinitely distant sun with parallel rays and no refraction, and then assumed the Earth's sphere and then used spherical geometry or geodetic surveying that assumes the Earth's sphere used geo, geo, uh, spherical geometry. This is begging the question fallacies. This one from John. We got this one. Samir Farsane says, gas in the dome. Why asteroids asteroids don't burn sooner? Can we see some asteroids, please? I don't. I don't think that you hey, know at least that those are real. Well, it's not so, an asteroid, but it's comet. Austin hey, well. finish his sentence, Leo, for crying out loud. Yeah, like uh, actually, all the meteors, for example, come from the same six radiant sources in a reoccurring cycle. You don't ever see things come down from the sky and hit the Earth from magic outer space. None of that's real. They claim the reason they're reoccurring is that things are dragging debris around in a cycle around us, or maybe there's just a reoccurring electrical cycle to the sky and what's around us. Uh, so yeah, there's no evidence for these things. And every time that they claim, oh, asteroids about to hit the Earth, all the flat Earthers just chick kill back can like maybe drink a beer and chill and laugh. And then you guys are like, oh, we're all going to die. But you're not. Asteroids aren't real. That's all part of the religion used to scare and brainwash the masses. Go ahead, Leo. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't even remember well, the point. I just want to point out that outer space is real. We are orbiting our nearest star. And the reason that we are able to breathe is because gravity holds an atmosphere here. This Baseless one. reassert it again and again and again. This one from I'm Jesse. explaining facts. Jesse L says, <laughs> Leo, how, car- how far can we see on a globe model? In what direction? I mean, that, that's, that doesn't specify a lot. I don't have much to work with here. Like, are you talking Straight about ahead. mid and outer space? Well, what device are we using? Like, I, I have no idea. I don't, I don't. He's talking about straight ahead have a, over the Earth. I, I still uh, what 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 device are you using? Binocular? Like I'm not. I don't have any specifications. I can't. It shouldn't matter. There should be physical Earth curvature blocking you at a certain rate, which is one point two two five times the square root of the. But yeah, but you can still see feet. off. Your, into your like telescope space. isn't going to go. You can still see off into like space and stuff like that. So I don't understand yeah. how that solves the problem. You'll get there. This one from Sky Scion says Leo sounds like the kid in class that didn't study for the test when the teacher calls on them they make stuff up to try to sound prepared we see your cartoon poster leo keep worshiping the 2d the 2d uh, well space is four dimensional so i have i don't know what that means i also uh rather excelled when i was in school so i don't i don't don't know why people comment on like stuff like that it, I don't know. It makes no sense. I also just want to jump off that we actually have nothing but cartoons and CGI to represent the 2D flat Earth model. Now I know that is the lingo that they use. However, we have pictures, we have videos. We do not get the same in return. We literally don't. They're all CGI, admittedly. Himawari is stitched together and admittedly not real. Their website explains that they just take stip- <coughs> uh, stipulations of data or stitched together data and put it on a flat, uh, on a globe earth assumed model of the blue, the blue marble. You don't have real pictures. We don't claim that anything is t- 3- 2D. We told you seven times in this debate that we've dug down eight miles and then you continue to straw man us with a 2D something, which is ridiculous and goes to show that once again, all you guys can do is beg the question and then use ad homs and then use straw man fallacies. So I think the audience should understand fallacious arguments usually come from the side that is wrong well fallacious arguments doesn't mean that you're wrong it just means that the reasoning you're using to the conclusion is is not correct it doesn't bear on the conclusion at all number one number two the distance we drilled into the the distance we've well that's not a straw man you're you're you literally just made the statement you're making fallacies and that implies that you're wrong except that it doesn't learn a fucking logic course um (laughs) uh, uh, secondly digging down eight miles into the earth doesn't mean anything about its shape so i don't know why you keep bringing that up so uh, yeah you're Dude, just she not said it even was 2D. on topic i explained we talked about the depth 
numerous times in the debate. So stop strawmanning us about uh, something being what too What am I strawmanning? I'm explaining. Amy just said that it was 2D. We talked about the depth of the well, earth I'm not three Amy. times. So, yeah, but you responded. Secondly, I didn't say that because you used to fallacies. you, not Amy. I'm not saying that because you use fallacies, you're automatically wrong. You could be yes, debating something that's the truth and just not be good at debating, just be ignorant, and you could use fallacies. What I said was, usually when the only thing that one side has is fallacious reasoning, it typically is coming from the side that is wrong. But we this think you're using crazy. fallacies. You think, but I just, now nah, continue. We must move on. I want to say, folks, one interesting thing is we did a poll earlier in terms of which side you thought was more persuasive. Consider this. If you thought, if you thought that your side, that you were, let's say, here and seeing represented on behalf of you was more persuasive, Great reason to share the channel for real. Consider it if you share this video and you thought your side was more more persuasive. Well, then you could say that your side won on a neutral debate platform, and you can share that link with other people so that they can see it. And that helps us as we are trying to expand this neutral platform where we give everybody a shot to make their case on a level playing field. So if you haven't yet, go ahead and share the video if you thought your side was more persuasive, whether it be a Discord group, Twitter group, Facebook, you name it and this question coming in from Deej says better sci-fi movie the matrix or terminator 2 austin what do you think wait sorry what was that the matrix or terminator 2 what was a better movie uh i've only seen the matrix and it's it's pretty good i actually think everything is backwards in the matrix and that the angels are the good guys and neo is the antichrist but um you know i'm a conspiracy theory. but i've never seen terminator so i don't know i'd have to say oh, matrix i guess also i just want to piggyback off i do oh. When I said two-dimensional, and I heard someone say it before me, nonetheless, my point was that you don't have anything but drawings or CGI. And so that would be the actual point, not focusing on the two dimensions, because you can make a three-dimensional flat earth drawing or CGI. My point would be you don't have any actual photos or video of a flat So I didn't earth. straw man you, Amy? Oh, uh, no. Not at all, okay, Leo. You're I doing didn't great. Think so. Mwah. Literally all pictures ever is of a flat earth. And admittedly, for the 15th time in this debate, they don't even claim to have full real pictures of the earth being a globe in entirety in all of existence other than 1972 moon missions for like the 10th time. So whatever, bro. But, you, all you have is CGI. But that's it's not really answering obvious. my question. I asked you, why do you not have anything but cartoons and CGI? And you're like, all they give us is cartoons and CGI. I said all pictures are of a flat earth. That's, that's what I actually true. said. But that's so you can, okay. you'll, you'll get there. You'll get there. You can say I'll get you there. What you said was very silly, but I still heart you. I still heart you. This one coming in from, do appreciate your question. Thunder storms that the earth without water is shaped like an egg, not a sphere. What? I don't water know. just doesn't behave that way. Water fills its container and it will create a flat and level surface between any and all edges. So it can't be egg shaped. It can't be sphere shaped. It can't be anything else other than the edges being higher than the water level. And considering we know our the, the known Earth is at least 70%, slightly more, uh, water, then obviously the land masses are that which is above the sea level, so therefore it just has to be flat. It can't be anything else. It's as simple as that. That's the end of the discussion. Yeah, Why does water dynamics. find level? Fluid dynamics is the process because that always trying to find a state of equilibrium. No, because static water could do the same thing and to which the, the, you wouldn't apply fluid dynamics. There's no dynamicity, so that can't be an answer. Fluid so statics. why does water always fly, why does always um why does water always fly find its level? equilibrium? Yeah, why? Because it has mass, it has it has its fluidity, and therefore it will being heavier than air, it will fall through air, and then being, why is that? being less dense than yeah. the ground, it will rise above it and create a pool and create a sea or whatever you want to call it. it it's always going to do that because that's just the natural observable law of physics. Pressure mediation. Yeah, but, but, but what is that law? Like why, why does water fall through the air? Well, we just call it density and buoyancy. It's a simple law of gravitation. I, I have a question. Can, can you give me the equation for buoyancy? 
Oh, it has a little G in it, but the principle of Archimedes. Yeah, principle so it has gravity in it, right? Gravity is, Archimedes, is an aspect of buoyancy. That's why Archimedes, you don't have buoyancy in space. The Archimedes principle long predates the equation with little G in it. And again, I explained this, but again, you just have not We don't use it because little we have better G, equations. Little G Just, is yeah, actually yeah. downward. Little g is actually downward acceleration, an agreed upon average. That's it's just what the gravity is. That we observe, it's not actually the cause claim, which is big G, which is what's in contention. No one disputes that things go up or down. It's a mathematical construct, an agreed upon average of downward acceleration. Yeah, the whole point the of it is it's just the formula to try and describe what we actually observe. It's not trying to say why it is what it is we observe. It's just saying what is happening. It's not saying why it does it. Why? Well, it does I, it I it didn't say that it did. Is basically a resistance. Resistance is the only force, and resistance comes from the density of the medium that it's in. So because air has very little density, it has very little resistance. Water has far more density, so therefore it is far more resistant. Ground has far more density, so it's even more resistant. Everything is a resistant force. It's not an attraction force. Everything can be broken down to resistance, not attraction, and that explains relative density and buoyancy. So why is Earth's gravitational constant in the equation for buoyancy on Earth? And why, do, why, why, is, why is there no buoyancy in space? Why is there no buoyancy in space? We don't make if claims about a, fairy tales. If you, put a being, if you put a ping pong ball in a bag of water in space, you can just literally look this up on YouTube because uh, astronauts on the ISS have done it. The, the ping pong ball will actually sit in the water. Can you tell me why that is? It's no one goes to space, time. buddy. So, <laughs> well, except that the 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 astronauts on the International Space Station well, that well, are literally in a in a weightless environment, you can literally see them floating. Now, well, unless you well, want to say that it's oh, well, that's just Hollywood with their laser beam. All right, so water, let's hear it rise, then you let's can do that. Interrupted. But. We'll we'll come back to you, Leo. But let's hear from Flatter or Iron. Go ahead for a minute. Yeah, it's just basically saying that if you've got a glass of water in space, well, there's nothing to contain the water, and water is made out of individual molecules, so that's why it basically boils in a vacuum because it's returning back to its gaseous state. So you can't even have a glass of water in space in the first place. You wouldn't have it. It would just dissipate into the gaseous components, and basically what they've done is they've put a basic a little sponge into a glass of water, suspended that into it, and say, oh, look, weightlessness. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's a crazy argument. Well, but except that the environment in the ISS is still 14 pounds per square inch because that's what humans are used to on the atmosphere. So it is pressurized still, number one. Number two, there is still gravity in the ISS. That's why it orbits the Earth. There just isn't enough to give rise to buoyancy because G is too small. Why is it that G is such an important factor? Why is it that if G is too small, you don't have buoyancy? I'll explain it if you don't interrupt, right? So okay. little g is an agreed upon average of downward acceleration. Everything's intrinsically electrostatic. And actually, we have an electric gradient that results in a downward bias. So there is a slight downward bias. Not all flat earthers agree on this, but uh, it is pretty pretty demonstrable in my opinion. And everything's electric on the Earth. And so we factor this in so that we can actually mathematically quantify the effect of the buoyant force, right? So relative density seeking equilibrium or density to seek equilibrium in the process of seeking equilibrium. So it's, it's not really that big of a deal because it's... It's in no way proven gravity. It's just the effect of downward acceleration to an agreed upon average for mathematical purposes. Uh, the, you're actually claiming big G is the cause of the effect, and that's what's a contention, and it's never been proven, and it never no. will be. That's number one. That's not what I'm claiming. Number two, what um, factor in the e equation for buoyancy gives is, is the it, it, it talks about electricity? What 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 variables are the electric ones in that equation? Again, if you're claiming G that electric forces are affecting it, then you need to give me what the, what the, what the dynamical variables for that electrical interaction are in the equation. What are those? Okay, so uh, electrostatic just sets the up and down. Little g is nothing more than the quantification of the agreed upon average of the down. So when things go down... This isn't an answer to my average. question. Well, let's give him a chance to finish. I promise mm -hmm. we'll give him a when something goes down, we have an agreed upon average. That's the effect of downward acceleration. That's all little g is actually representing mathematically. I'm explaining that what sets the up and down is actually the electric gradient we have on the earth, which goes up 100 volts per meter equal potential increase. And uh, yeah, so things just go up and down. It's not very complicated. It's just a little agreed upon average effect. And no, I didn't say that they mathematically uh, uh, call gravity into the equation. It's just intrinsically what sets the up and down. The agreed upon average is the effects, not the cause for like the fifth time. 
Yeah, yeah so you didn't answer my question. What are the um what what dynamical variables represent that electric interaction? You just said, well, there's some variables that do that. What are the variables? Give them the to little me. the little g itself is a quantity. That's gravity. Not not electric. That is not an electric force well, at all. That is gravity. What is it? So what are the electric ones? The little g itself is a quantification <laughs> of the effect that comes from the electric gradient. It's just the effect. No. It isn't gravity itself. Downward acceleration is not what gravity is. It's the effect of gravity, which is big G. We both have the same effect. I'm telling you that the actual cause is electric as everything is. You're claiming that space-time bends and warps, which literally is just insane reification fallacies. I personally just, um, yeah, no offense to you, uh, um, <laughs> But I, I think um, it is actually just the resistance from the density of the medium that we don't even need to invoke any sort of electro sort of force whatsoever, um, electrostatic or whatever. It, it's just the, the resistance factor is simple enough just to explain why a thing will drop or why it won't. This and one. so if there's no resistance of the actual medium, then that's basically all we need to say why a thing drops or why it doesn't. This one from Brandon Hansen says, question for the globe tards. <laughs> Why does all the evidence and theories that justify the globe come after the assumption that the earth is a ball? I would say it's the exact opposite. Saying that we have a presupposition is incorrect. Just saying like the scientists have a presupposition that the world is a globe is uh, incorrect. What has happened is a scientific consensus has been formed in that all physicists, all people in the field believe that the world is round. And we have multiple experiments for, at this point, hundreds of years. I would say the first empirical was thousands, but really um, it took natural philosophers um to uh, go into the process of science for us to really verify it. This one from oh, yeah. MJ mm -hmm. says, Austin, how many empirical evidences have been given? I don't know what they, what side they mean. Um, yeah, I give a lot. Like every single time that we do anything in the world, like uh, fly planes, helicopters, ballistic missiles, any long distance shots, anything like that, that all assumes a flat stationary plane earth. Well, every time it's effectively implemented, the practical use case is physical evidence for that that assumption of the Earth being that way. And then we physically measured it. So all physical measurements show that the Earth is flat. So the amount of empirical evidence is all of it. All replicated evidence shows that the Earth is a stationary topographical plane. What the globe Earth claims is, well, it's it does always look like it's stationary. It does always look like it's the center. It does always look like it's a plane, but actually it's too big to tell it's curved and spinning and tilted and wobbling in a vacuum, and it always looks like it's flat and stationary. That's the actual position. That's why we say we need actual evidence. So the Earth is the center of the universe, just like Pluto is the center of the universe, just like Jupiter is the center of the universe, just like the sun is the center of the universe, because that is how expansion in all directions works. There would have to be a central point, wouldn't there? No. This one from Shapeshifting yes. Monkey says, I feel like I'm in ancient Athens being lectured to by this soggy Aussie soaking in his pickle barrel. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that. It's like, a, you look You're jealous, bro. Look very <laughs> charming in your hot tub. Deej says, sorry, Witset, but Iron Horse is, let's see, they say he's carrying you right now. So they thought you're part nah, of No, not at all. I think Witset's doing a bloody great job. I just have a slightly different point of view when it comes to some sort of electrostatic attraction. I don't think it's necessary. I just think we have the bottom of the universe and that's what the Earth is. And we have everything else above us. And I don't think we really even need to have a force apart from resistance to stop things from dropping any lower. And that's what the Earth is. It's the resistant force that stops anything getting any lower. Yeah. This one from the Crawdaddy 029 says, Flaters, I think they mean flat, uh, flatters. They said, would you donate your brains to science when you go? It would help humanity to find the flaw that leads to rejecting reality. <laughs> Self-projecting because you haven't tested reality yourself. You just let the cartoons and believe them. So. Brandon Hansen says, Leo, why don't 
I have to take in the rotation of the Earth when I shoot long range? And why wouldn't the rotation affect the trajectory? Because it's not a way when he says shoot, I'm assuming he means just like, like a shotgun or something or maybe like a bow and arrow, like a compound bow or something, because you're not going over near enough of um, a distance, except snipers do actually have to account for those things um, when they're making long range shots. So there are certain people who shoot that do have to account for that. The average hunter doesn't. It, the, the range isn't long enough. That's what he's talking about, shooting long range. He's literally talking about why. Well, you can't, uh, unless he's a sniper, then he does have to account for it. So if he says that he doesn't, he's just lying. Well, actually, I know many snipers that don't, but here's the middle ground here. Well, not at all shots. Is that they, well, they claim that they factor it in mathematically, but the wind almost always overtakes it. So you never really have to account for it. And then you have the spin barrel rotation itself. So, like, you never really account for Coriolis. It doesn't actually do anything. And when you really shoot, you're not accounting for that. You're accounting for wind and then spin barrel rotation. But, but ironically, of course you wouldn't was... account for Coriolis. You're not, not nearly large enough scale. To what about the airplane that? That a lot further than the shot, shot bullet? So why does the airplane not have to account for Coriolis, but this shot bullet over a period of three miles does? But the yeah. airplane can just keep on flying in a straight line without ever having to worry about the earth moving beneath it. Or Felix Baumgartner going up to 128,000 feet, dropping seven, uh, three hours later, and being 71 miles to the east when he should be at least 3,000 miles to the west. What happens to it. What the earth ever move? He bunks the globe. Oh, well, um, airplanes actually do have to account for the Coriolis effect to they an extent. So. What? Tell me how they do that. They, they do, do that. not. They do I don't not. know how they do it. I'm not a pilot, but I know that they do. No, they don't. Not even the autopilot do. does. Do if you can't tell us how they do it. Uh, well, yeah. autopilot would have to. Yeah. Without making a claim. But it's going to depend on which direction the planes are moving. Oh, one second, one second. Too, too many people speaking at once. Go ahead, Iron Horse, what have you got? We'll come back to you, Leo. He said he made a positive claim, so therefore he has to have positive evidence in order to make such a claim. He says pilots account for the Coriolis effect. So a plane that flies at top speed of about 500 miles per hour is accounting for the Earth nature spinning approximately a thousand miles per hour towards the east. How does the pilot account for that if you claim that he does? Uh, well, that's not the Coriolis effect isn't accounting for the opposite rotation of the Earth. You're already moving with the stationary Earth before you take off, so that's not an effect. So I don't think you understand what the Coriolis effect is. That that, that has to do with that. That has to do with the conservation of momentum as one moves laterally from the. Uh, I think it's laterally from from the equator. Um, as you're moving orthogonally from the equator in either direction as a result of the conservation of momentum as a result of Earth's rotation and your movement, you will veer off of a straight path. Um, right. If planes are moving in the proper direction, there there are slight there are slight effects that they do have to and do account for, yes. They do well, not I, adjust for core- the state of the plane. Sorry. They do not adjust okay. for Coriolis. I just want to clear this up. They objectively don't. Like they in the, also you can talk about the conservation of momentum. Well, as you get higher and higher up off the Earth spinning, if the atmosphere was moving with it, you would have to have additional energy higher and higher up. But it would violate the conservation of energy and momentum. You do in have addition, it. Now. And oh, but there's no mechanism ever proposed for why. You, you also want me to give that, you one? They also they also claim something called super rotation, which they claim the top of the atmosphere is moving faster than the spin of the Earth, but they don't know why either, which also violates the conservation of energy momentum unless you have a mechanism. No, it doesn't. In addition, as you have the accelerative frame of the Earth going underneath you, due to the quote-unquote Coriolis effect, you would have to bank to the left or bank to the east and speed up forward, accelerating to catch up with it due to the conservation of uh, angular momentum, but they don't do that. Right, they actually just maintain a constant speed relative to wind alone. So yeah, globe earth debunked. Exactly. Uh, well, that's not certain. Sure. No, for somebody who claims other people like bloviate that you're doing a lot of bloviation. Um, I don't even remember what you said because it I didn't it didn't even <laughs> register. Do you want to like refresh my mind on what your point no. was? This All right. Yeah, so, so yeah, it yeah, seems can, you're not even actually even interested in a discussion. You're not no, actually just the interested in helping people understand. I'll repeat one and more I, time. I think if that's you, like one of the biggest things here. All right, Leo, check it. If you, you're if not you interested shoot, in a discussion. If you shoot a sniper rifle and you claim that we have to account for Coriolis because the Earth spins underneath it, changing the path of the, the bullet when oh we shoot God. north to south. The love of right. Pete, if you ask him to try to explain it, Leo, 
and then he's trying to explain it, and you speak over him. But he's not explaining it, though. That's the problem. You can do that right after he gets done finishing, but it's like when you constantly interrupt. You do interrupt an awful lot. I know, because they don't answer an awful lot. Okay, so here's the thing. They probably think that you don't answer an awful lot, but they're not Except I can't explain objectively how I do. They can't. So here's the thing, though, Leo. You have to have a perspective of, like, other people have different opinions than you, and, and not everybody has the same theory of mind as you. So, like, there are other minds, and they have That's different confused. interpretations of things. I'm not saying that they're equally right, but I'm saying, like, it, they probably think that you're not answering just as much each time, but they're not interrupting. But so we'll give it a chance, Austin, and then we'll go back to Leo. The fundamental idea is that the claim there's Coriolis with the bullet shooting north to south – uh, has to be adjusted for because of an inertial and accelerative frame of reference, then it would also apply to the plane like Iron Horse brought up. The problem is that planes in real life do not adjust for Coriolis. The autopilot doesn't. Also, when someone flies a plane manually, they would have to know about that, but they don't. They maintain a constant speed. They would have to bank and accelerate forward, but they do not do that. So claiming that the atmos- most Globers then claim the atmosphere moves in lockstep with the Earth, which also isn't true. It actually would lag behind due to fluid f- uh, dynamics. And so then we know that actually there would be an increase of energy proportionate to the increase of speed proportion to increase of altitude which means that you're violating the conservation of energy i i, I don't want to go i mean if you don't understand it i don't know what to say but super rotation at the top also would need additional energy to not violate the conservation of energy momentum you can't claim coriolis and claim planes don't have to account for the spin of the earth at the same time great meridian great circle fl- flights debunk the globe if you don't account for the spin of the earth underneath you all right leo we'll give you the same amount of time you don't need extra energy. You just need less friction. So you you don't even understand what conservation of momentum is. I think you're confusing it with conservation of energy. They're similar, but they're not the same thing. Um, and there's less friction higher up in Earth's atmosphere because of the vacuum of space. Um, so it I wouldn't surprise me if there are actually currents in the upper atmosphere that move at greater rates than currents in the lower atmosphere as a result of gravitational dragging. People who actually understand these things, they, they know about these effects, they understand the equations that define them. And then you have those that talk about things they have no understanding of. This well, I, would, I would also like to see any evidence that the atmosphere would lag behind with those sort of calculations, because that is the definition of an atmosphere, is the gases that are being pushed down from gravity. So, Wow. Okay. Well, the so fact you, that we wow. have wind, the fact we have winds that can go westerly, they can go easterly, they can go northerly, they can go southerly. The wind is actually acting independently to the atmosphere all the time, and yet the wind, the wind is the atmosphere. Is. What? Yes, I, I don't even yeah. understand that. What does that mean? The wind no, is the atmosphere moving. It's the, no, they claim the wind moves independent of the lockstep. No, they the don't. The yes, because it moves in all directions. Move it doesn't just move east. It is moving independently. Wait, That's how wait, you, there's a wind speed going a particular direction. So if you're trying to say that... You wait, are, are you asking if the, the wind speed is like... Empty. T- do we take into account the rotation of the Earth before we account for wind speed? Well, then, yeah, y- y- obviously. No. Yeah. Well, you have to if you were we trying to do for. reality. Yeah, we do. We could just assume yeah. that the Earth is flat and stationary, and then we can just observe the wind speed being exactly what it is, yeah. which is what it is. It also See, just really sounds like proves the atmosphere. It no, like what we're saying is that as it went with the hold ocean, on, there's, okay, just one person at a time. So it's a no, right? If you have then a, Austin, okay, sorry. Oh no! I just—it sounds like what you said is that the water doesn't go with the ocean. And that is just non-coherent. Like the wind, about the wind is the atmosphere. So I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. So if the wind, like if you have a blender and you and you turn it on, the middle mechanism that is rotating, right, it's going to go a certain speed. All the stuff outside the blender is going to lag behind the middle mechanism proportionate to the distance outside of it. It's going to get further and further behind it. It's fluid dynamics. It's a very simple concept. So as you go higher and higher above it to go the same amount of distance or to go to a greater distance in the same amount of time requires you to go faster, right? It's very simple concept. So that means that the higher you get above the earth, the bigger the circle circle is, the bigger the orbit, the further distance traveled. So the atmosphere would have to be going faster and faster proportionate to altitude increase to keep up with the earth objectively. That's just basic physics. So then either it lags behind or it doesn't. They claim it does, but it's not very much. That it's just like two miles per hour up to about the height of a commercial airliner. So you don't have to really account for it because wind is a greater adjustment than that. We have problems with it being intrinsic 
intrinsically contradictory to Coriolis. You have to adjust for it. The law of conservation of energy and momentum both debunk Gotta this. On. Super rotation also does. All right. This one coming in from, do appreciate it. Brandon Hansen says, Leo, why don't I have to take in? We got that one. Andrew Handelsman says, Witsit, I saw you and Team Skeptic at the theater the other day. Did you guys go to see Top Gun Part 2? Just thought it was odd seeing you together. Cheers. You ain't all the team? No, bro. Come on, man. Good this one from, Brandon Hansen says, never had to factor it, Leo. I shoot 800 plus a lot. Yeah, that's under the limit. You're not 800 plus meters? I'm assuming. Yeah, you're not. I don't think you would really need to then. This one coming in from Deej. Thanks for your support of Modern Day Debate. Want to say, folks, our guests are linked in the description. We hope you enjoyed this debate. It has been a lively one, to say the least. All of our guests, Leo, Amy, Austin, and Iron Horse, fully uh, in his hot tub, are linked in the description. Which, by the way, thank you to our guests and thank you again, Iron Horse for jumping in last minute. I know that it's been a busy, busy day, and so we appreciate you jumping in for Davey. And want to say, though, all of our guests are linked in the description, including at the podcast, folks. So check them out. You've heard their views. You can check out their channels. And with that, thanks so much to our guests, though. It's been a true pleasure to have you. Appreciate it. Thank you much. Bye. Thank you very much. Thanks, Amy. Leo and Austin. Awesome to team up with you both. Yeah, you too, bro. I'll be back in just a moment, folks, with a post credit scene letting you know about upcoming debates, so stick around, and I'll be back in just a moment. Amazing. My dear friends, thrilled to have you here. We hope that you're having a great 
day or great night, depending on where you are. Two seconds. Let me just move over. Can you see me? I'm here. Don't worry. I'm still here. want to say thanks so much. Let me say hello to, the, hello to you in the old live chat. Thank you for all of your support. Seriously, it means more than you know. Here I am at the bottom left. There. How's, how's it going, guys? Good to see you. Thanks for being with us. We hope you feel welcome, whether you be Globe Earth, Flat Earth. Seriously, I know it gets, it gets wild and it gets rowdy but i want to say we appreciate all of our guests seriously we appreciate you globe earth flat earth you name it and we know that for our guests i would rather it be a wild passionate debate rather than if it was a quiet boring debate so we appreciate all of our guests we appreciate their gusto it was a great debate seriously it was tremendous amazing and want to say thank you guys so much. Seriously, I enjoyed this. It was a blast. I hope you did too. But let me, before we continue, I want to say hello to you in the old live chat. Cracker Jack, happy to have you here. Globe Busters, thanks for coming by. GA, thanks for coming by. And thanks for your super, your super generous channel support. We appreciate your support. And yeah, folks, if you didn't know, we do have channel membership support. So we want to say, hey, highly encourage you. Check it out. Consider it. You can become a channel member for as little as a dollar ninety nine. You can you you can use those epic emojis that you see in chat, including calling people <gasps> Soy Boy, which is a favorite, or using the amazing one. So thank you guys. We appreciate all of your support. And thank you guys for being here in the old live chat. A rowdy guy. Thanks for your kind words. Says James, you're a legend, bro. Grateful for you. Thanks so much for that. That means a lot. We really hope you enjoy Modern Day Debate as it is a neutral platform. We strive to give everybody a fair shot to make their case on a level playing field. That is our vision. And this is just the beginning of our story. My dear friends, we are thrilled and excited and appreciate all of your support. Sharing the channel, liking, all those things really do help. Seriously, thank you guys. As we have hit 80,000 subscribers and we appreciate all of you, each and every one of you. Thank you for subscribing as that helps as well thanks for becoming a channel member sapo man welcome to so much soy thanks for joining that channel membership level seriously your support means a ton and maybe you're like eh, you know i'm not into the whole youtube i you know i'm kind of i think youtube is kind of biased or whatever it is we have patreon that's another way to support the channel so i do want to mention if you haven't yet you can consider like hey Let's say you join the Patreon. We have different levels. That's something to consider. It's as cheap as two bucks a month. That's one way of joining at the first tier. If you join at five bucks a month, your name shows at the ticker at the bottom of the screen during the debates as we appreciate all of our supporters. Thank you so much. And thanks for your super chat. Nominal says it gets quote unquote rowdy because really religious zealots tend to get triggered when you challenge their religion. Well, juicy. I don't know which side you're referring to, but appreciate your super chat and TNA plastic. Good to see you. Jared A. Thanks for your soup, your support of you uh, of modern day debate. Seriously. That really does mean a lot. We appreciate that commercial sound and video says thumbed up. Thanks for that thumbs up. We appreciate your liking this video. As, yeah, it really does help. The channel does grow. When you, and you might be thinking, James, how does it grow? I don't understand. Like me hitting the like button, I just don't understand that. Thanks for your support, Iron Horse. I see you there in the old live chat. And thanks again for saving this debate 2v2 format by jumping in. That means a lot. And so I'll explain, though, because like I said, people might say, I don't understand. If I hit the like video, does that really help you, James? I mean, it just seems like it's something to, you know, just because, you know, it just kind of ends there. No, it doesn't really. The YouTube algorithm, from what I've read, does factor this in. In other words, for example, our YouTube videos, our debates get recommended a pretty good amount. We've got a pretty good ratio. So that's a cool thing. They get recommended more when you hit the like button. So like I said, if you want more people to see this debate, yeah, you can share it. That helps for real. Like if you've got a Discord group or a, a Globe Earth group on Facebook or a Flat Earth group on Facebook, whatever it is, you can share this debate. And that that's a great thing because if you thought your side was more persuasive, well, then you're sharing material where your side was more persuasive on a neutral platform. The other thing though is maybe you want other people to see it on YouTube, for example. If you hit like, that means our video will be recommended to more people. So for example, when you're on YouTube, like right now, you can look just below the live chat and you'll see recommended videos. So for me, I have like Kit Boga, 
closed on Sunday. Kimball, I have, there's more Kit Boga, Rock Collection. Modern Day Debate videos are more likely to show up in people's recommended videos if you hit like, for real. Also, though, they're more likely to be ranked. So if you search Flat Earth Debate, this will probably be, namely this video, will probably be recommended in the top five, at least for like the next like several hours on YouTube. And that's cool because YouTube is basically like testing to see like, hey, how popular is this? And usually it falls, you know, down the ranking. But the, the more likes it gets, the higher ranking that it'll get in terms of the placement when people search the phrase, flat earth debate. So it really does actually make a difference. So I'm trying to just give you the reasons behind why we ask you to hit like, as it is, a, it's a real way of supporting the channel. It doesn't cost you a dime. Sharing the debate as well, like I said, that helps a ton too. Like, like maybe you're like, hey, like uh, I'm not, I don't know about channel memberships yet and I don't know about Patreon yet. I've never done either of those and I don't really feel like doing either of those. Well, hey, you know what? You can help this channel by let me fix this little, I've got to, this is just driving me nuts. I'm going to fix this. It's the last thing I do. On screen, do you see the little graphic there? There we go. That's better. Is you, if you're like, James, I, I don't know about this. I, I'm just not sure. Well, I can tell you. You can help this channel just by doing those things. It really does make a difference. I'm telling you, we appreciate it. And I've got to say, good to see you there in the old live chat. Whirl of bliss. Thanks for coming by as well as random guy. Thanks for dropping in. Mrs. No 86. Thanks for dropping in. Scott Miller says, hello. Thanks for coming by Scott. And Thanks, KK Pink Factor. We are glad you are here. Sean Miller, glad you're here. Greg Warriner, happy to have you here. And Slang, glad to have you in the live chat. Regis Terslow Bear, thanks for dropping in. Diamond S, we're glad you are here. As well as Ozone McWego, thanks for coming by. Iron Horse, I see you there in the old live chat. Amanda, thanks for coming by. Really do appreciate your help in finding this new venue. Seriously, we're going to make this work one way or another if you got my email already. Whether we take, use that venue or we might be able to talk our old venue into matching their price, which would be a cool thing because that's a, a good bargaining chip. If we say, hey, you know, we got this other place and, you know, we could go there, you know, it'd be a pretty good deal for us. Would you be willing to match it? That's something that uh, either way, your help seriously means a ton, Amanda. So it is going to help one way or another. We appreciate it. Thank you for your time and your support. And sorry that I was so late to get back to the environmental center. So I appreciate your patience. Joe Lato, good to see you. And good to see you as well as Rifa. Thanks for dropping in. Felix, glad to have you here. Nick McIntyre, thanks for dropping in. Glad to have you. And Sini Norfolk, happy to have you here as well as Ghost24824. Thanks for dropping in. Amanda says, the Patreon is bomb. Meetings with James make it 100% worth it to go all in. And that's right. We do have meetings with me. I'm actually, like, tomorrow we've got a meeting. At, is at 11 a.m. Eastern time. So if you are in the, it's the front row seating tier for Patreon, that's another possibility, is that I have these Zoom meetings where just 10 bucks a month, you know, it's like basically the price of a uh, Chipotle once a month is basically those are meetings where I say, hey, what topics are really hot right now? What would you really like to see? That tomorrow, for example, is what we're going to be talking about a lot is uh, finding out what topics we're going to probably have for our conference coming up in November, which is going to be awesome. Master Offix, good to see you there in the old live chat, as well as as well uh, as well as Truther's Hour of Comedy. Thanks for coming by, as well as Greg Warner. Happy to have you here, my dear friends. Thanks for all of your support. Helio Skeptic, good to have you, Mr. Anderson. Good to see you there in the old chat. Surrounded by Keith, am I saying it right? Glad to have you, Diamond S. Thanks for coming by. Aha, uh -huh. glad you're here. I see you there. Aha. Uh -huh. Grim Theorist, thanks for coming by. And thanks for your super chat. Dingley Bumbus says, is COVID James saved? Is COVID James saved? Cheers. Christ is the best winemaker. Thank you for your super chat, Dingley Bumbus. And uh, is COVID James saved? Is Are you asking, am I okay from COVID? I, I think I told you guys the other night on Wednesday, I had COVID. I'm almost back to normal. I do. Thanks uh, for asking. I appreciate it. I am really close. I have an, a stuffy nose still. So I'm almost 
back to normal. And I'm hoping to be back to normal tomorrow or Monday. So that's encouraging. But I want to say, yeah, thanks for uh, asking and, and looking out for me. Is Yeah, I've, I've had a, this is the third time I've had COVID. Isn't that crazy, you guys? And I just had it two months ago. Just two months ago. And I had it, I got it again. But it wasn't nearly as powerful this time. Like this this time I, I like got over it a lot better. Um, it's, I've been able to handle a lot better. I've been resting more but not needing to like sleep an entire day like back in july iron horse thanks for coming by says thanks for the channel enjoy seeing it go from strength to strength again thank you iron horse for forgiving me and uh because as you know i had strong words in our email exchange and i appreciate you forgiving me i owe you it's true uh thanks for jumping in and you would have Haku says did you hear my response about the young turk shout out i did let's go to that so I saw you said Anna Kasparian said to Dennis Prager that MDD is a potential platform to debate leftists on. It was awesome. That is so cool to know. I am so pumped because modern day debate, uh, hearing that now we're being, you know, that, yeah, some people are like, even like, uh, that's something I had dreamed of. I told you guys this like six months ago. Do you remember when I said someday, you know, these people are going to be on Twitter. They're going to be these big time content creators like Young Turks is like one of the biggest political commentary channels, period, like on YouTube. And I said, there's going to be, you know, big creators who are going to say someday like, hey, well, if we're going to debate, why not modern day debate? I said, you know, it's going to happen, folks. Believe me on Twitter. We're going to be recommended and it's happening. So the fact that Anna Kasparian had said, hey, uh, like Dennis Prager, like modern day debate would be a good place to debate leftists. That's encouraging. My dear friends, it really is happening. We've got something big going on here. That means a ton. I am encouraged by that. I really believed it. And it's happening even sooner than I expected. So that's encouraging that Anna Kasparian had said that. And we are excited about the future, you guys. We've got some big stuff. I told you I've got some juicy news. I've got to tell you, we are working. I'm not, I can't tell you yet because it's not confirmed. But we're working on setting up a debate between... Whew, I've got to tell you. he's working. We're working on setting up a debate between Destiny and a very, very popular content creator on whether or not there's a, there's a satanic elite I will not say who the name is because we haven't confirmed it yet. So I can't say that yet, but I will tell you we're excited about that. And then light of the twin lamps. Are you still in the old live chat? Let me know. I'm going to tell you light of the twin lamps. You sent a super chat the other day. I want to answer it. And then I can send this to you later and hopefully you see it. Uh, Said, I would love to know your daily hygiene, beauty and workout routines to achieve the giga chad physique. That's funny. I, I don't know if I have a giga chad physique, but I appreciate your kind words. My daily hygiene is I do use lotion once a day. I should probably use it more than once because I live in Colorado where it's super dry. Uh, uh, and then beauty and workout routines. I, uh, you know what I do? No joke. I'm dead serious about this. I, I have read or I found online that it helps. I use these micro needles, like one of those like derma rollers. I've tried to use that to help kind of keep my uh, elasticity to have a little bit more. What's the word? I can't remember the word. Uh, because because I, I like, I when I was young, did not use a lot of sunblock. And so now I use these little derma rollers and they just kind of help keep a little bit more elasticity in your skin because I wish I would have used, that's for real. I wish I would have used, I'm not making that up. I'm very serious. I wish I had used sunblock when I was younger because I I usually look, I'm usually told I look a bit older for my age and I'm not like worried about it. Like I'm willing to to be honest about it. I'm not like afraid of uh, saying it, but yeah. So I'm like, eh, you know, okay. Like I want to try to keep that. What's the word, the elasticity, the, uh, there's like something in your skin. uh, You want to keep it. Uh, I can't remember it, but it's supposed to stimulate that. But the other thing is I work out once every day and uh collagen that's the word sapo man thanks for and thanks for becoming a channel member sapo man seriously i appreciate that but yes collagen production is the right word it's i use these little derma rollers and it's uh you know they're like five bucks for a derma roller so it's not like it's expensive and and so yeah collagen but in terms of working out i work out once every day pretty much on average and uh yeah i would say it's pretty accurate average and i work i lift i usually lift every day so a little bit not a ton but maybe 40 minutes or so on average and then uh, yeah so but thanks for your kind words and asking baby squirrels thanks for coming by and then 
We appreciate you guys coming by. Thanks for all of your support. I got to go. It's getting pretty la uh, pretty late. But I want to say I love you guys. Thanks for all of your support. Seriously, you guys make this channel fun. It's honestly, it means so much. Thanks for all of your support. And yeah, if you haven't already, if you haven't checked out, I am pumped about this. Modern Day Debate is on your favorite podcast app. If you haven't checked it out, you have to. What are you waiting for? I mean, this is huge. This is awesome. So, for example, let me pull this up. My favorite podcast app is Podcast Addict. But I know most of you use either Apple or you use, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Spotify. So, if you use those, that works too. Google Podcasts, we're on every single podcast. So, if you haven't yet, I mean, you might as well try it. And you can also... Maybe you're like, well, I've already tried the podcast, you know, and maybe you're even looking at it right now. You can give us a rating if you rate us. That helps us, really, for real. Give us a, a, a little feedback on there. Damien Martinez says, get those gains. Amen to that, Damien. Thanks for your support, buddy. And But, yeah, so I'd encourage you, if you have not yet checked this out, Moderate Data Debate is on every single podcast app. And that way, Baby Squirrels, I love you too. Thanks for your kind words. I appreciate that. Is that way, let's say you're driving through town. Let's say you're like me. You're driving through town and you all of a sudden have a bad spot where your service doesn't work very well. Because that happens to me a lot. No joke. It happens all the time. And it makes me go insane. However, if I have a debate downloaded through the Modern Day Debate podcast. So, for example, like right here. It's hard to see my phone. But Modern Day Debate, you can see our logo there. Is You can download the debate and then you don't have to worry about if your service goes out as you're driving because you've got the debate downloaded. How convenient. Have you tried that Mrs. No 86 or Nominal or Cracker Jack or Slang or Mr. Optics? Is Modern Day Debate does have this podcast, which is cool. It's a it's a nice little, you know, trick. So, we like that. That's pretty cool. And then let me see here. I got to move this. Do I have this right? There it is. Okay. But yeah, so pretty cool. We're excited about that. And yeah, the podcast is growing. It's 100% ad-free. We don't make a dime off of it. We hope it's just a value for you. As again, the other thing too is maybe you have limited data. You don't want to pay for unlimited data. Well, hey, who can blame you? You can download these debates on your podcast for free. You don't need YouTube premium or anything like that. You can just download them on the podcast and listen to them. Pretty convenient. Not bad, huh? So Thanks for your support. Appreciate you guys. I love you guys. You guys make this fun. And anything else? Am I forgetting anything? Thanks, guys. I love you guys. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button as we have many more juicy debates coming up in the future. Thanks for all of your support, guys. I look forward to seeing you in the next debate as we have a number of them lined up for the next week. And we look forward to seeing you then. Love you guys and have a great rest of your night.